we're we're close. We're like at at the gates of Ravenloft for the final assault. Nice. I got talked into taking because we got we found two of these life gem things, and they either it's like an instant resurrection to full HP for a down party member, or if you turn them into the right person, you gain a level. We turned them both in. And I took two levels of Barbarian you on my Echo Knight. both in. <laughs> Yeah, it was... I mean, the the uh, DM was kind of egging us on in that direction, because he's like, oh, look, you could take two levels in this, you could do, you do this. I have so... a coin, and you can either gain a level <laughs> or end world hunger. How about that level? Yeah. And he is... Pretty he's, nice. he's pretty pumped, because he's been... This is the third time he's run this... Uh, Curse of Strahd in five years, and this is the first time some like a team's gonna fight Strahd. Who's pretty pumped about it? Wow! <laughs> yeah, that's one reason why I'm so yeah. hell bent on you guys finishing TOA. I bet I just I've not, never ran it, but I know how easy it is for it to just die off. The big bad's gonna be a, a fucking huge bitch. I can already tell. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a dragon in Curse of Strahd too? Okay. There is. Um, I think he kind of homebrewed it. I don't know if we're going to fight him or not. It's Slagethnica Na is its name. It's it a blue dragon. It, I don't, that's what I'm saying. I think he homebrewed it a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's currently an undead dragon, which I think okay. makes it worse. Yeah, just a little bit. We, we, we literally just barely escaped it, and we like rush into the castle, so hopefully we don't have to fight that fucking thing. At least it isn't a minefighter <laughs> dragon. Yes. Oh, God. Have you seen those yet? No, that sounds terrible, though. Just like, um, let me see if I can find it on the Dindy Beyond Hall. Let me see if I can look it up. Yeah, so don't that worry. A, it is terrible. Is that it a is. dragon that somehow got a tadpole in it and it turned into a Mind Flayer dragon? Or is it an actual, like, Mind Flayer <laughs> dragon race? Uh, it, it, it was it, a tadpole, I, I believe. Yeah. It's Lord. the tadpoles. Yeah, because its breath weapon is tadpoles. Yeah. Oh, lovely. That's yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's it fun. is. <laughs> it is the ultimate. Oh fuck! Like yeah. it's not no, as we OP fucked up. as the Radiant Sun Dragon, but it's pretty close. Um, I, mean, I actually have the book a for it. Sun I'll, is a Radiant Sun Dragon. <laughs> I'll send it. I'll send you a picture, KB. I'll send you the stat block for it. Yeah, send it over. Holy dragon. Holy dragon. So good. Yeah, Radiant it's Sun fine, Dragon too. is how you end a campaign. You can end a campaign with a Mind Slayer Dragon. What, Rob? A void dragon. I, I'd still say the sun dragon's got him beat. Really? How do you kill the sun? Like, his lair is a sun. Like... <laughs> right, but the void <laughs> dragon's a literal dark star. They're yeah. both stars. They're both bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you take, like, 30 d20 radiant damage a turn. Jesus like, Christ. It's stupid. It shouldn't have been a thing. The DC 24 dexterity saving throw or every creature is strained and is taking 20 D 10 falling damage. Yeah, see, the Radiant's got it beat because you're blind in the sun. Like, Oh, that's not even counting the fire breath. <laughs> and the aura of madness I that gives you I mean, I can tell you the turn. Radiant Dragon's breath weapon if you want. That's I'd fantastic. Have to pull it up. Oh, Solar All Dragon, right. sorry. Ancient there we go. Solar okay. Dragon. That thing's a beast. Hey, that's a little more different. Uh, photonic Breath, 40 foot radius, DC 23, 12 D10 radiant damage. But yeah, the lair action is every turn, take ra a billion radiant damage. Hey, okay, well, you man, are, you just check that out. Sorry, 24 D10, time. not 30 D10. I apologize. 24 oh D10. I like what they did with the tongue, though. I do, too. The... Yeah, that's really cool. All Switch right. you get the stats on it. Friendly heads up. We might not have solo tonight. <clears throat> really? Really? I... You told me you said you'd be back in a minute. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be late to a point that I might not be there. Huh. That's That sounds longer than a minute. Yeah. That sounds longer than a minute. Well, when he so... left earlier, he didn't sound like he was just going to see her for a few minutes. He'd be a little bit late, but he didn't say that. Huh. Okay. So I'm going to hold on to Harry for the time being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I believe everyone's here. And it is that time. 
So, where we last left off, the group finally did their ambush towards Boshian, attacking the group inside of the chain bearers, discovering not only the kobold uh, rookie captain but be from before, but another one of the chain bearers, this time seeing what seems to be the furbolg of the group. After discovering her malformed creation of grotesque, flesh-covered pus and nastiness, that seemed to grow uh, undead from the corpses around it. They were successful in taking down uh, not only two of the members of the Boshian, but also a gathering of bandits as well. However, one of them getting away from a uh, teleportation circle. The group, trying to gather whatever remains within Boshian, uh, Daisy decided to go up to the sacred tree and try and cut off a piece of bark, only to immediately start falling and to you guys seemingly falling unconscious and still. Cold, too, to the touch. Cold Another to the thing. touch yeah. for the time being, as all of you start to gather around. Uh, all of you watch as after a couple of seconds, uh, Daisy does seem to come around. Hey, see, there we go. We're worried over nothing. She screams, she screams out loud. As oh, if she's oh. seen bloody murder. <laughs> and she starts to, to push back away from the tree. Hey, I thought um, trees were kind of your thing. You see how her eyes are locked in the tree? Both in absolute fear and awe. Daisy, <laughs> give me a perception check, please. Alright. Let's leave the tree alone. 15. You can still see them. She continues crawling backwards. Get to shower after Look at where Daisy's looking. Do I just see a you tree? Being super sweaty oh, and dead by part. daylight. Got it. Uh, for you, you just see a tree. Yeah, Daisy. Burned. Most of the branches have been like completely burned to a crisp. Uh, however, you do notice where she did cut what seems to be a almost glowing, almost luminescent red aura coming from the veins of the tree itself. Okay, so it's just a tree, Daisy. Um. Perhaps leave it alone from now on? No. Didn't see what I saw. Harry, you want to tell us what you saw? Yeah, you uh, that seems yeah, a little concerning. No, I'd rather not. Ooh. Anything about that? Okay. Are you still seeing it? Because it's just a tree over there. Daisy will uh, not answer anything. But by the time okay. you look back over there, Daisy, it is gone. Still breathing very fast. <laughs> Still hyperventilating. I'm gonna raise my new sword up and aim like kind of look at the hilt and or the blade and put the blade between my vision and the tree. Kind of like you know, like how people put thumbs up to the horizon kind of deal. Mm hmm See if anything, nothing. <clears throat> Nothing at the moment. After a while, you see more uh, almost reddish black smoke pouring, almost filtering from where the uh, cut was made. Please don't do that, right? Uh, Odd tree. Hey, Bunny, you're good with explosives, right? Is that thing going to blow? Don't, don't touch it. Don't look at it. I wasn't planning I... on touching it. Yeah, I'd recommend we all step back. We don't know if that's fire within it. Otherwise, yes, that would be basically a ticking time bomb. Yeah, I move away from the tree. Oh, kind of like grab what Daisy by her shoulders York? and just drag her back a couple of feet with me. She's not resisting. She's being dragged along. And she'll say, mm -hmm. they won't allow it to be destroyed. It's their tree. What?
Not responsive. From Boshan. <sighs> no response. Uh, would you like me to inspect it, Olive? No, no, this is her deal. If it's gonna get her killed, let it. Like, you're good. Uh, okay, you did say I, I wasn't expert in explosives. I could see if it's actually explosive or Yeah, not. no, if it's gonna explode, I don't want you near it. I should probably just leave the tree alone. I agree it with that. It doesn't seem to be near it at all. Yeah, I was just, just wondering like... if you could tell from looking at it, you know, because you're so smart and all. From her shoulders, I can hands, like right. I mean, if you can do it from here, great. I don't want you going near that thing. What would I tell I, your I mean, mother? I might, I might need to get a little closer. I'm pulling. I'm pulling him back further. No, nope, you're done. No, just, just a little closer. Just like a couple steps. Listen to her. No. So, I want to do something weird. I want to try to do a healing word onto the tree. Uh, okay. <laughs> you expend the spell slot, yep. sending the aura <laughs> of healing magic out, uh, but there does not seem to be any change or effect to the tree. Okay. I try. Maybe it was a weird tree creature thing. <laughs> well, whatever it is, just kind of got her spooked, and I pick her up from her shoulders and try to stand her on her feet, lift dust off a little bit. Maybe we'll stay around. standing, but just looking at the ground, <laughs> eyes wide. <laughs> yeah, I'll just oh. turn you around, <clears throat> facing away from the tree. Daisy's mm. being. Are you okay? Does Harry have anything additional for his perception? I don't Not know. Not really. No. I can Not check really. I think it's all decks. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for a sheet right now. I was yeah, going to say, I was gonna say uh, hey, Vannon, now that Daisy's being useless, does this thing look like the tree that we saw at the hag place? Or is this... Do you remember? Uh, Give me a nature check, please. Me? Okay. Mm -hmm. 16. Nice. Uh... This looks very familiar to the tree that you saw within the hags. It has the same structure, the bark has the same patterns, and the last time you were here, it didn't have the sickly, green, mossy-like fungus to it. It had more of the same fluorescent pink that you saw from the uh, the large tree within Windspear. So, in other words, it's been corrupted. However, right now, it is mostly just a burning pile of uh, broken wood. Still standing, still solid. Um, Mold is the best, especially when it's with Harry. Harry. See if I can roll decent. Of course you can. Just turn your hacks on. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, turning them off now. There we go. Yep. He's toggling. <laughs> He's toggling. He's toggling. I'm toggling, guys. Don't worry about it. I got this shit. <laughs> no, uh, let's see. But uh, he will, like, while you're dragging him back, he's like, uh, no, not explosive. Not explosive. It's just pouring something out. Like, I, I, I'm not sure. Is it oxygen? Is it air it's pouring out? I don't know. And I neither need to do be I. Closer. That's why we're staying away, Harry. Why are you pulling me away? I need to be closer for these things. Wait, hey, Harry, what is it? What do you mean is pouring out? Like the liquid? No, like gas. Or That's smoke. Something. Thing. Harry, here. yes, smoke. I gesture to my shield. Use that. That'll help you. Uh, does he need to attune to this? Uh, I believe not. You just put it on. Please double so while holding the shield, while holding the shield, you have advantage on initiative and perception checks. The shield is blessed through the symbol of an eye. Just double checking, because mm -hmm. otherwise this is one hell of a fucking shield. 
It is. <laughs> no, freaking that shield's a beast. I was sad to give it up, but <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Hold it. Son of a bun. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he will take a hold of the shield. And okay. He'll take a hold. With advantage this time. I probably that's kind of out of my league. That's not normal. That's not normal. That is not normal whatsoever. Yeah, that's why I'm keeping you back here, Bunny. Will you just listen yeah, to me, yeah. please? Uh, of course. I'm trying, but I can't help you. It's cool. I know, you want to touch. But you know what happens when you touch? You just ask the professor. You lose a hand, okay? Or as you Daisy. See you they want to see. <laughs> or as Daisy, you lose consciousness. Exactly. Uh, I wasn't going to cut it. I was just going to look at it. You can look with your eyes from back here, okay? Best to leave it alone, honestly. Fannin. Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. You still have those books with the symbol of the Seven Sisters? <clears throat> yes. I hate playing Two dead mother for the bunny. No. <laughs> Can I have their names, at least? Yes. One second. I can find them. Maybe. Chapter one and chapter six. Or chapter four, sorry. <laughs> Chapter one, chapter six of what? That's all it says. <laughs> Have you read them? I can't read them. No one can read them. <laughs> I mean, I could read them. Open it. Open no, I've chapter... tried. Even go comprehend languages doesn't work. <laughs> open chapter one. I'll open chapter one. I've read a, a small smidgen of it with a messed up coded infernal that it's in. I will try and look at chapter one, see if I see anything or understand anything. Uh, you look over it and... You can never have too many bunnies in your you life. You can Let's see after a minute or so, some of the letters seem to slowly begin to pull together. Uh, you can see after a while, the first page does say, Chapter 1, The Sacrifice and Gifts of Blood. I'll read it out loud. Hmm. That's ominous. Open Chapter 6. Vanin. It, yeah, I try, it won't show up anything. It's in a weird coded thing. I look After at it again. a minute or so, you will see Chapter 4, Dionys, Daughter of the Iron Tower. I will say out loud as well. The moment that he tries to open further pages, you just see a mass and you feel a Stinging pain in the back of your head. That same burning station sensation from before. Daisy will drop to the ground and clutch the back of your head. Real shit. I just got your back. <sighs> what is it? Uh, uh, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, you don't say. And I grab the back of her collar and drag her up on her feet, drop her. Why did you even do that? Lapse of judgment. We're in a hurry. Oh, you could have at least said something to me first. Well, I wasn't particularly speaking low. I was talking to Harry quite loudly. I'll go and grab my shield from Harry. Oh, all right, after that, whatever that was, what are we doing now? We're going to go back to respite and 
Let them know the boat shot's been cleared or we're gonna go north. Still got them wolves, right? I mean, I'd love um, to go north for Silas since he's up there, but... There is another thing. Mm. They, uh, they said another shepherd may take her place and we may not be able to deal with her or it or whatever it is. Who's they? What are you talking about, Daisy? I point to the cover of the book. They. The Seven Sisters. Shepherd of what? Oh. Sheep? I can handle the a hag. sheep. Yeah? The hag was a shepherd. And the next one may not be within our control. Apparently, the third princess is somewhere within the angry mass of vines and plants. So now we have one more reason to go there and deal with it. But I thought we dealt with it. No. We stopped it from growing. But as she said, it's only a matter of time till another shepherd is appointed. And then it'll keep growing. So what are we going to do? Go west and cut down some trees? Go west? Fireball takes down trees pretty well. You know what, Vannon? For once, I agree with your use of fireball. <laughs> so wait, I'm oh, not, so wait, we're not killing wolves? Never mind. We can go to the wolves. No, we can go west if you want. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. No, I just remember they said we're not ready. Well, there you go. Oh, there's our answer. I guess we're going north then. What? It is a long way to that mountain. But just a reminder, there may be a shepherd once again. Great. Just Majestic. Yeah, and we'll kill some wolves, and then we'll be more powerful than she can ever imagine. <laughs> Or will be strike down, one of those. Dan, what's that on your arm? Mm -hmm. Oh. That's new. Uh I don't know. You you can now see what seems to be a slowly ne growing necrosis beginning to build along Dune's arm. Yeah, maybe we should deal with that. Before Do I know what it is? Uh, give me a medicine check, please. 23. Uh, you know this to be a case known as flesh rot. Uh, mostly coming from undead creatures, you know this to be a curse in more cases than none. Uh, however, they do spread throughout disease. And you do know that in many cases, uh, you'll need either a remove curse or greater restoration to remove such a thing. So, like that shit I had on my hand. This, when was this? Down in the cave. I think I, I came into contact with that mushroom growth. Uh, no. This is different. <clears throat> okay. This is more like an undead living parasite that is currently eating away at Dune's skin. Okay. So yeah, maybe we should get that taken care of. Yes, yes please. Dune straight in his eyes and say, well, I can't remove the curse. Today. If you want to remove as fast as possible, we would have to go back to Respite and hope that the uh, church lights can do something about it. I would prefer that, yes. I don't want to look like when I'm shambling corpses. Man, that takes sure. us even further south and we got to come all the way back. Well, I you don't how... want to be lo I don't care how long it's going to take. I don't want to turn into a corpse very soon. Do I know if, they, if the I've done any it before. damage done is reversible well, after the yeah. curse is removed? Uh, You know that if it's not treated, a lot of people do eventually turn into the undead with this particular uh, curse. 
you know that it can be removed when the curse is removed, yes. I will say this as they're both arguing. Even more reason to go back. I don't mind taking out one more undead. Let's <laughs> you try. I will. Hmm. So, back no, to no, no, Okay, okay. All right, just calm down, both of you. We both need you alive right now, <clears throat> given the fact that you're both protecting our asses. So, perhaps don't try and go for each other's throats. Guard it. Yes, I you know, finish this. See, exactly. Harry and I will team up on you and finish you. See? It, it, thank you, just Harry. remember that uh, all of this, they have a cleric. If what? Just, they have a cleric. They have a holy person. They, she can we heal them all the cleric. time. Fine, I'm just saying. It's an extra... Fine, let's go back. Let's go back. Who's got the thing? Probably the wizard. Wait, wait. One of the two wizards. Yeah, I got it. I'll hand it back, please. Let's get this over with as quick as possible. Hmm. Let's go. Hmm. We do home respite. It brings us down with us. So, home call respite? Yes. yes. Yep. What was the spell that we put in there again? I did during the last out, uh, downtime. Oh, what was the spell? I mean, I thought it had to just be just like level five. two or level three. I, I don't know. Oh. I'd like to know what the spell was cast. Well, let's check. Okay. Um, I know that actually casted the spell. I just said. <laughs> I still so choose a spell. <laughs> choose a spell, a level two spell. Level two, okay. Um, levitate. <laughs> Fair enough. Interesting. Okay, as all of you actually don't get turned into forms of energy, but instead are immediately bolted into the air, Superman style, across the <laughs> across the sky. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, that, oh, shit. It, it feels almost like being rocket propelled directly underneath your feet as you feel the wind shooting across and you feel almost the heat coming across your face as all of you start bolting through the air like meteors. Uh, you see starting to... <laughs> there is certainly some panic yelling <laughs> as there is a faint... coming across the horizon. <laughs> Heading over. Uh, I would like everyone to roll some perception checks, please. Yeah. Of course. I need to just stop rolling high for Harry. I need to save those for later. <laughs> you should. We told you to stop the toggle. I turned it off! <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, okay. So, uh, Daisy and Harry. And Olive. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, I guess yeah, that never happened. Here. <laughs> I know. Did we lose? Hello there. A rare one of you, uh, familiar for one. <laughs> so, uh, while you three immediately start seeing it to the side at this momentary um, movement towards respite, you can see that there is a form of movement that you can see in a familiar place. Uh, a gathering of Okay. Uh, a gathering of an outcropping you can see all too familiar, a set of jagged stones looking like a large set of teeth 
uh, surrounding a very much familiar looking hole in its center. Uh, you can see what seems to be a gathering of movement, a slight rise in the earth around it, slowly circling the hole before eventually you see no movement at all. Seems the GG is still moving and is active. Of course it's moving. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look. That, but something's that's moving. That's funny as hell. You're familiar with a blade. I need to take note of that. All right. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, yeah, it's great. I love that. Yeah, to use it however you want. So. All right. Uh, but yes, you guys will see the GG is moving and is active. Something has apparently disturbed its resting place. For whatever reason. And you guys bolt down towards respite once more. I will send you guys back. Or Pike, you can just hop on over. All right. I was thinking. <sighs> You guys bolt down, almost swearing that you're about to hit the roof as you feel yourselves bolt down into the ground, untouching, and eventually three-point landing into the teleportation circle. Oh! oh. I can't get used to that. Was that thing moving? The giant stones? Yeah. Oh. What now? Yeah, I saw movement. <laughs> All right, so I wasn't going crazy. Okay. No, no, that was definitely moving. Doom just pukes up next That's to himself it. again. I, it I was wasn't off. moving before, was it? I don't remember it moving, but I don't usually see those things, which is why I'm surprised. Well, I've ne That's... It's nothing that ever caught my attention from that direction before. Well, it almost killed one of us. Oh, lovely. And it kind of caused him to leave i believe i'm not sure wait is it the the thing that we talked with venon about <clears throat> the thing and the mabobs like the, the the really really big fuck no thing yes that's directly above where we are like just a little to the north yeah, yeah. okay um... yes i remember this story mm-hmm yeah, I'm not sure about that. That's a little concerning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. I guess we tell someone. Probably Ben and you. All hear the sound of footsteps coming down. The door opens. The lantern is there. Piri will look inside. Oh, hello. Hi, Ben. We need you. Rush! Come! Um, she will push the door open and just start making her way up. Still in her nightgown, uh, pure white, the familiar uh, turtle dove will move on up. Come! Come! Hurry! Yeah, yeah, we're coming. Let's go. Yeah, I'm following. Yep, I am following too. Uh, you follow her up and you do s hear the sounds of shouting and what seems to be arguments and roiling and maybe a little bit of fighting outside. Oh boy. What's going on out there? Well, let's go and find out. Have a peek, have a little look see. Uh, What's going on? Step outside. Piri will step to the side and you can see what seems to be a Almost mass of bodies that you can see in this moment in time. Uh, clearly two gathering sides on either side of, uh, at this moment, respite. Clearly divided by what seems to be Zenis and his group of Voshian uh, tribesmen holding his hands out alongside another individual uh, that you can see. Uh... Dark red hair covering what seems to be almost a flowing, almost amber-looking uh, set of skin. 
horns rushing back towards the very uh, back of her head, and what seems to be a pale white nose ring uh, resting on her nose, a set of pale yellowish eyes, and what seems to be red and green cloaks and coverings, uh, what seems to be a very thick looking uh, furred coat on her back and swaying what seems to be a large great sword in her tail. Uh, you can see she is looking over at what seems to be a large gathering of green and red cloaked individuals, also amberish looking skin, all weapons at the ready, however, seemingly held off guard. On the other side of the cart, you can see what seems to be a large gathering of miners and militia at the ready <clears> to <throat> offend, it seems, but uh, respite. This is a mild misunderstanding. We are not here to invade. We are simply here to help our friends. This is not to worry about. Please, can you can someone get Ben? Uh, so you can hear there is a quite a bit of commotion between some of the miners who are shouting out obscenities in all kinds of languages towards the uh, clearly armored and uh, prepared natives. Daisy will step forward and go. What's going on? Uh, you see her immediately turn around. The great sword at the wrapped around her tail is immediately pushed towards her. As you see, Zenis quickly step forward. No, they are friends. Don't worry, they are they are fine. And they are. They are not here to ambush us. No. Oh I please! In my condition, I couldn't mm. ambush even a rat. You do look a little. Uh, Worse for where? I think we all do. I mean, you know, speak for yourself. I could probably do an ambush if I wanted to. Flip her off as she's talking. I look at... You see her narrow her eyes at this, and you just see the great what? sword behind her just sway with what her tail. What is that about? I'll, I'll look, look at... I've got wrong guard. I'll Good look job. at Harry, I'll look at Olive, and I'll look at Dune, and say, take Dune to the, to the lady, please. Fine. Yeah, you do. I mean, I'm contrary to popular belief, I'm actually quite a people person, but all right, let's go. Oh, I get escorted. I'm special. Woo. <laughs> Just so I can kill you if, I, if you turn. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you can try. Exactly the point. I go, oh. time is of the essence. Yeah, I'm, Harry um, and I and Dune will go to the cleric. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All of you make your way to the side. Who's staying? I am. Daisy is staying. Okay. You see, I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick little picture of who's currently standing in front of you. You see a familiar uh, looking tiefling. Not familiar to any of you, but it seems the red and green uh, cloak and robes do seem familiar to the ones that you saw getting uh, the remaining Boshian members out. And you can see a lot of these uh, armored individuals on her side are also wearing the same red and green sashes. Who... I'll look at the lady. Who are you? And I'm trying to make a sword that has like a feathered you? blade. Well, we go by Grim Undertakings. But we've been trying to help Zenis with the bandit problem up north that seems to no longer be just a simple bandit problem. And if you want to know why we're so haggard, and in case you didn't notice, one of the people I sent away had flesh rot on his arm. We just came back from Boshion. And needless to say, it is clear for now. But one of them got away. The two chain bearers are dead. Look chain at Zanis. bearers. No, go ahead, go ahead. Who are these chain bearers? 
the individuals who have attacked us so far. Um, my apologies, all of you. Uh, I should have been a little more forwards. This is Irne, Twilight Runner. She is the leader of the Anikoto tribe towards the uh, northwest of here. She is a close friend of mine. And has been friends with me for quite some time. Uh, I apologize, Zenith. I did not know you were so interested with the uh, colonists. I would have expected more from you, but given your situation, I do not blame you. So, you are friends with Zenith. I suppose I can make acquaintances with, uh, for, with you for now. But I will not deal with this respite folk. Very well. One of our party members is a local. So we're, we are technically a mixed group of people from the other side and from Azrana. Well, given the situation that you are not currently capable of battle right now, I see no issue in communicating with you, given that you are not currently forming arms against me and my people. You'll just see her looking over at the militia, where you can see Venon is slowly pushing his way forwards at this point, unarmed. Still in his nightcap, mostly. Yet to forgive them, there's been quite a lot of disturbance around here lately. And who are you speaking? Um, forgive me, I am uh, Professor Edwin Branich from Strixhaven. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Right, the pleasure is mine. Give her like a uh, formal bow. This particular situation, I am not familiar with the customs of this colonizing gathering so for the time being i would prefer if i move my people from their borders if you would like to join me you are free to do so however i was merely here to hand zenith back his men we will be heading back home said you're from you're you're from up north to the northwest yes I would be we... cautious if you're further north of here. The chain bears seem to be spreading out their influence in that direction. We are familiar with the individuals towards the north within Fort Ridian. We have been able to right. get away from <clears throat> their sight for the I think time I got being, the sword as we are able to, to be unseen in many cases. You're familiar with the fort. I am familiar with Fort Ridium, yes. How, how well defended is it, would you say? Hmm. Well, let me do this for you. And you can see her step oh, over. That's much better. Uh, does any of you have a map? Uh, yes, I do. I point to Vannon. <laughs> nope. He's always prepared. Yep, he does. You see her walk over. You see her reach up, press the middle finger to her forehead, and flick down towards the map as you see it slowly warp and change onto your new map side. Wowee! Andy Kirk. Ooh. Anikotal. This is most of my knowledge of the surrounding area that I am willing to hand to you. Fort Ridian is the one nearest to the coast that you are probably familiar with. My small town towards the northwest is uh, Anikota. It is mostly secluded. We keep to ourselves and mostly keep to uh, the high end skies. It is a vast amount of cliffs that we enjoy, and we are quite familiar with climbing vast distances. Oh. It would be a little bit of a challenge for your current uh, group to get there without help, of course.
Fair sure. enough, I guess. We have, have a means of flight. Mm, well, yes, some of us do. The very <laughs> affrontish lady does have a means of flight, but only temporary. Only temporary. Called me a friend. Yes, indeed. I, I, I see. Uh, how long is this process? Mm, I don't know. Last time she did it, she did it for like a minute. Because she was really angry at, at a cursed item we found. I, I see. <laughs> it, it is an interesting enchantment that you might hear. Uh, we specialize in our cloaks. Our cloaks are quite uh, very useful. Interesting. What? How useful? Cloaks are flying. <laughs> can get behind you that. just see her smile for a moment. You see her click her heels together, and you just see her lift off the ground, maybe a couple to two or three feet in the air. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> they also cool. have uh, very nice capabilities. Such as you see her click her heels together again and she turns invisible. Ooh, very interesting. <laughs> that is quite a useful cloak. Do, you, do your people sell these cloaks? No. It is a more religion, more ritual. If uh, you are able to be one of us, you are able to wear the us. cloak, so to speak. So, in the Go. general sense, you'd okay. have to be one of us. Me. If you wouldn't mind ex a brief explanation, what does that entail exactly? Let's see if I can show it. One. You just see her smile, and just lower back to the ground. I look over the none professor. Of your done. Professor, you would have stopped. That. You wouldn't be from Strixhaven anymore. You would be from Anikotal. Oh, I mean, I realize. I'm just curious what sort of initiation rituals are involved. As I said, good sir, it is none of your concern. Okay. Now, excuse me. I need to let my people uh, head Real down. quick before you go, do you, do you know anything about the gross coming from, I guess, capture, south right? of any Katal? I am place. familiar with it, yes. We have been tending to it. The cliff sides have been quite fine protection for us in the last few weeks. We have been oh. able to burn it away without any issues, and so far it has been nothing more than a mild inconvenience, if not a very fine gardening situation. What do the vines and such look like? And I kind of explain what the tree looked like in the that the hag had, and see if it's kind of similar. Uh, you see her step down, stepping forwards, and she will open her hand, revealing mm. what seems to be a five foot long, uh, unmoving vine that you can see. However, where you would usually see. Uh, a very vibrant Having looking green is more of a grotesque looking, almost darker emerald. Uh, however, mixed with browns and almost a purplish blackish uh, growing hue throughout most of the veins of the vines themselves. Do you have any idea what's causing that? The, and I point to the purplish area. All right, so that's one. It has been a little uh, a research that we it. have been putting into. It seems to be a form of oh, uh, some DM, so I was mess messing with it and uh, uh, some growing this is an image that came out unknown, of it. I didn't quite get exactly what I wanted. But unknown that's where entity, it started. Some sort of toxin. But this looks really nice. It's unfamiliar to us, yet it is anyway. Uh, we are unaffected, it seems. Yeah. It looked like the hag was affecting it somewhat because they had a tree that was so this is the similarly affected. Why. The hag was its shepherd. Or gardener, if you will. Or, 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 or no eye, I guess. 
Are you speaking of the uh, large uh, and then there's this winged one. creature that we saw to the south? <clears throat> yes. Well, that was one that died. <laughs> yes, we the had, creature was uh, her pet. Oh. But it's not really bladed. That is... And her. Good. You want to see an over-the-top oh, anime blade. Well, I had heard rumors from my scouts that uh, show you an over -the -top a anime group blade. of uh, individuals had located the yeah, hag's uh, I... walking house and apparently had brought it down. But, here's but my I had not heard that blade. there was a victory. I did not know that uh, respite and the colonizers had such capable people. Oh, there's another over-the-top well, anime blade. Try our best. There's another one. That's even more ridiculous. Perhaps it is wise if we uh, speak in the future. If you are capable of such things. Very much. I'll be uh, very interested in learning your history of your cultures and stuff. Oh, I'm a lot. Sure you I've been working through a lot of images. Many people trying have to get tried. it to look right. There I you will go. Admit. It is not this thing is the one that either like attaches to an arm or like it's just floating there. But yeah, another over the top anime blade. Really, we have something that you uh, wish and desire. You just see her smile slightly as she swishes the cloak behind her with her tail. But it's a fine cloak. Aye, and in right hands, All right, so it is very eye useful. or no eye? At least it's nice much and white, worse right? in the wrong ones. Professor, do not steal it. I kind of like the no I will eye. look at that oh, in the eyes <laughs> and this one has say, nice design. do you know of the third princess? I like the little intricacies on here. She looks at you and you see the smile that was mostly just like a very confident yeah, grin just name. fades Bail. slightly and slowly lower. What third princess are you speaking of? Yeah, I like this one better. I look around. Is there still a crowd? There is quite the crowd. It's better if it's in private company. <clears throat> uh, she will look over at her remaining troops, which you can see is probably a solid 40 to 50 men. Uh, currently also wearing the same familiar cloak that she is wearing. All at the ready with blades at their sides. However, uh, at the look and with a quite quick nod and a almost unheard whistle on the edge of your hearing, you can immediately see them resheave their blades and start making their way out towards the borders of respite. After maybe 30 or so feet, they are completely gone. I will go over to Ben and may your militia back away, please. All right, all of you, get gone. Party's over, get to your sleep. You just see him just pushing his way back through the crowd. Lie, I love how Ben's back to his voice business. has changed several times. The rest of the militia will make their way inside the Frontier Mining Company. The miners will slowly go back to their business, either towards the forges or towards the Lonely Sonnet. But for the time being, it seems that you are alone with Zenis, the Boshion, and uh, Ian. <laughs> you might just forget. Good night. Third princess, I believe, part of the seven sisters. As someone who makes up voices sometimes, I completely understand. Yeah, it, that's true. You are still not making sense. The third princess is still in Estira. Well, she seems to be in trouble. That is not possible. She is in the protection of her home. As well, are all of the royal family. Her father has fallen sick. Seems to be on his deathbed. Her other sisters you, are looking for her. You see both Zenis and Ilnay looking at each other like, wait, what? Both of them look shocked to this news. Wait a minute, you... The king is... I. 
we would have heard information of this. Yes, we would have heard information from the capital uh, concerning the royal family's inevitable loss. What the, what do you mean? That you cannot make me believe that this is true. I I don't have power to show you the truth, but I can tell you that the seven sisters' name is Unlagni. Uh, both of them again look at each other. Zenis oh, will look a little perplexed and start contemplating before you see him give a slight nod. I am not the one that knows of the Seven Sisters. That is my daughter. She is a priestess of the Seven Sisters and the Inches. She would know of this. I... It is not of my knowledge. I am going to get something else to drink. Well, are they good or bad back. people? And Daisy's face is a bit more concerned when she says that. That is a layered question. There are seven. Each have their own influences and desires. Each had their own kingdoms when Esrena was made. It was until the year of the betrayal that we saw the history fade, uh, life completely erased. This land was not deserts before. It was rumored to be uh, forests and great jungles. It was not a barren wasteland like you see it is now. It was beautiful. At least uh, that is what I hear. The year of the betrayal caused the purge of the everlasting flame. It was the year that the betrayer discovered the seven sisters and decided that their creation was no longer needed, almost in an act of anger and vengeance. And in due time, Esrena turned into mostly a desert wasteland that only the strong could survive. And this has been history for centuries. The seventh sister was the kindest. She was the youngest. I do not remember much, sadly. I am not a religious woman. Well, as Daisy's voice trembles a bit, I think I may have made a pact with her. What? <laughs> God. Both of them just stare at you. Then let us hope you do not disappoint them. Yes, that's my fear. Because it is said that the mountains were once their graves. So if you believe that the mountains to be the mounds, how large do you think and how powerful do you think they are? Insanely so. You just see her give a ghost of a smile. It would seem so. If you wish to uh, speak with me on this, ah, uh, by all means, try and communicate with me over in Kotel. I would be very interested to see any uh, progression into your uh, deal with the Seven Sisters. 
granted, I might not be a holy woman, but that does not mean that I am not curious of their power. Does she have any malicious intent behind those words? Give me an insight check. Like, do I feel she's she wants to know their power, see if it, she could use it to run away the colonists? Uh, you can go ahead and roll an insight because that's a layered one, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Damn she's it! Very hard to read. She, that smile, the confidence slowly coming back. She, you have a very genuine idea that she is very much in the driver's seat now when it comes to the control of this conversation. <clears throat> well, either way, I'm sure you have things to tend to, especially concerning these uh, chain bearers that you speak of. So I will go ahead and let uh, your people be at rest. Have a safe trip back. See her turn around. The tail brings the large greatsword into the scabbard behind her back. And within 30 feet, she disappears. Oop. Yeah, I mean, I'll look for my arm. My left arm is killing Zenith me. Will look it over has been you. for many hours, and I can't figure out why. Look I took some bear. At both Bannon but... and the professor. You see me do that? It's because this my shoulder is me getting issues. a little troubling. It is so much very strange so much to make trouble. a pact with them. It feels like muscle pain. Let's say a series of too fast decisions were made on my part. Do we have any control? This is a fortress. <laughs> Or maybe that's where they're from. I would say that it is. And then we got the four radium. Okay, that's the chamber. To perhaps. I didn't see that was added. Take in yeah. the information that you have I've gathered and use it Let me tell with you. the utmost caution. What she said is true. The seventh sister is the kindest. But it is. Well known that the seven sisters were never known to be kind to mortal folk. Closest thing I've been Excellent. lifting. They had their confidence. Are these little guys? That's power. the closest thing I've been lifting. But it is also known that they had perished and been destroyed. Sometimes at work, I walk in place for like five, ten minutes. In the year of the betrayal. Sometimes I use those. So, perhaps no, the only thing I'm interfering is with doors. the means of the seven sisters could also bring the eyes mm. of something much larger. That sounds ominous. Don't touch the apple. You saw the destruction <clears throat> that you had heard. Grass and vast jungles and forests completely turned to. And you just see him just throw his hand out towards the expanse of wasteland and desert. Mm. The purge of the everlasting oh, yeah. flame I... was not kind. Not to brag, but weird flex. Okay. Rock as an anchor. I used to do that. that was you cool. see him quickly begin to slowly make his way back. Send a pack. All right. Good luck to you. You may need it. Thanks, Ennis. Well, same to you. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, the at others. the Legion of Doom. Yes. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Indias, uh, you see. Wait a minute. <laughs> as you guys make your way to the coastal side you do see the wide open doors of Indius's, uh temple you see a all too familiar 
um, arch priest stepping her way around the altar, preparing some form of ritual, uh, some sort of ceremony of sorts. Excuse um, me. Hello. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, oh, welcome. Thanks. Welcome. I, I, Sorry, I didn't, we didn't bring Daisy, but this guy, this dude's gonna turn into some rot thing and die probably. I hold up my arm. Oh my! Yes, please come in. Come yes, in. you I'm, just see her you. immediately stepping to a side door, stepping inside. Uh, do, do, could you tell me of the condition, please? Uh, did, look, you just kind of started. I think. Um... What the creature gave this to you? Could uh, you give me details? Uh, it was a really big walking corpse. Kind of shadows red. were involved. No, it wasn't shadows. It was back at Boshia. No, they had shadows. They did? Yeah. I mean, I have a shadow. Oh, you're just being... Okay. Um, Big, red. Kind of scary looking. Like a walking, shambling corpse. So, undead in nature? Yes. Very well. Give me a moment, please. Uh, you, you see, in the side, she's grabbing a hold of, like, vials and uh, other pieces of materials from her closets and nearby shelves. I'm also going through books right now. No problem. Well, uh, she's <laughs> doing that, I'm going to try and uh, sneak a rat out of my hat. And indeed you do. A rat comes out and squeaks out and you just feel the rat go off somewhere and you just hear a slight screech coming from the very back of the pews as you see a female elf immediately running out and you see what seems to be a rat clinging to the back of her dress. Why would you do that? I kind of nudge Harry. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I can't take you nowhere, I guess. I'm sorry, are you part of this cult, this sect? No, but there's such a thing as called politeness. I'm extremely polite, thank you, to those who deserve it. See, here, uh, so uh, it was kind of just ask Harry. I'm a very polite lady. Mm hmm. Polite when she needs to be. Exactly. Mm. And right now, I don't need to be, and that was funny. It was entertaining. Okay, yeah, okay, it was kind of funny. Completely unnecessary. Oh, exuberantly unnecessary. That's a word, right? What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exuberantly unnecessary. Yes. Oh, that, that's a big word. I don't know. I heard the people in the, the... I heard Benin say it or something one time. Well, Benin is smart. Because if he says that it must be a word. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, the moon elf will slowly return... The Ark Priest, looking over you all. Ah, yes, I have the materials here. Oh, Sadly, God. I will need a, a small donation in exchange. And Much. Sadly, with this particular ailment, it will cost you a fine amount of 150 gold pieces in exchange for this. All right. How's those I pockets looking, dude? As, as I'm pocketing, giving, I'm just this middle finger, just give the 150. Uh, she will quickly pour over a set of ointments and a thick looking salve as she will wrap it over your arm, and you immediately feel a cooling sensation where there was immediate burning before. Oh. Keep that on for the rest of the night. The mm -hmm. um, the curse and whatever remains will be gone by the time that you are rested. Uh, you gotta keep Thank that you. on all night. It feels great, so I don't Yeah, but you look stupid. <laughs> Not a little bit. Oh, well. Whatever you get rid of this. Keep him alive. I'm <laughs> sure that will be all fine. <clears throat> Oh, she wants me to die so she can kill me again. Yeah. Kind of do. 
<laughs> just looks at you both. Well, if you're going to do that, please do that outside. Oh, of course. And I'd give a really long, exaggerated bow. Absolutely. Kelly. <laughs> you yes. see her smile slightly, give a slight bow in return. Don't make a mess. <laughs> I give her a nod. Thank you very much. After you, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna walk out. Have a wonderful day, ma'am. As to you, Olive. And we'll head back. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone will return unless you have anything you wish to do for the night. Nope. I have a ritual to perform. Oh, so you do? Yeah, ritual. about an hour. Ooh, rituals! And what is this ritual? Uh, it is to not only attune, but also to um, do the thing. Let me figure out the words, because things are things. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the Pact of the Blade on Loose Feather. Gotcha. The almost brass and bronze looking blade, the slight feathered texture along the very edge, giving an almost luminescent aura whenever you put it in the moonlight. Uh, can, I want to show you a thing. If you don't like it, I don't have to, don't have to use it. it. There it is. You can give me thoughts if you want. Otherwise, we don't have that to. That works. Use it. Okay. That very much works. You bring it out, conjuring in, taking a moment to close your eyes, and the moment you open, the blade is gone. You feel the essence to bring it out whenever you feel like doing so all right then the long sword i did have that i was using for it uh, i will replace in the sheath at, on my back um, and to replace the one that i put in that one pillar that one time and yep. yeah loose feather will go to its extra dimensional pocket all right So, everyone has their long rest. The remains go undisturbed. Daisy, keep in mind what you need to do now. Mm -hmm. So if you have points of exhaustion, take one point away. If you have hit dice, you get half of them back. You come up to the morning, and it is relatively peaceful. Uh, you can see that Harry does not wish to awaken for the time being. He's wanting to have a bit more of a longer rest than normal. Allowing you guys to do as you wish during the morning. First breakfast. Yeah, might as well. Normal or hearty? Hearty. Yeah, hearty. 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 All right. I'll Five pay silver. for a hearty for Harry and myself, I guess. Uh, He will eat when he awakes. Mm -hmm. So he will go ahead and take it. But go ahead and everyone will roll, can roll your d6s. It's five silver is... per, right? Yeah, right. Five silver per. Okay. And five silver for the private room, right? Five silver for the private room. Oh, no. One gold for the private room. One uh, uh, five silver for the shared room between you and Dune. <laughs> I still haven't rolled over a two for the all right, record. All right, Rob. Yeah. You roll a d6 for Harry, and I'll roll a d6 for Harry, and we'll show <laughs> the stream 
who cheat. Okay, sure. Wait, you're a cheater. You're a dirty cheater. <laughs> Proof. I got six. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I mean, if I beat your five, then it would have obviously been cheating. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> However, uh, we will go ahead and give Harry the four. Yep. All right. So, you guys have the day ahead of you. Dune, you are no longer <clears throat> diseased. Woo! Cost me a little arm, but hey. <laughs> Let's see if Freya's gotten anything new. Same. Did we lose bridge. anything last time? You know what? Let's see. Woo! Let's see, it's only been how many days? Uh, three? Three? three or four, three? yeah. Three, three days. Down. Okay. So it's been three days. Which means I have to roll something here. Hold on. You know do what? It. Let's do it. Let's do it on roll 20. Let's do it here. Do We're it. doing it live. Do it. Five items are changing. Wow. Okay. Bum, bum, and then we got five people. Bum. So hey. let's roll. Let's roll some D100s, please. Everybody? Hey. Everybody. Everybody. Right. Everybody. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> These 70s, man. Oh god. Okay. All right, Professor. I would have liked the 70 it. earlier. I ruined it already. So that means, yeah, Professor's got to go high then. Uh, Edwin. Professor. I think he's AFK, wasn't he? I think he may oh, no. be AFK. Oh, sorry, I'm here. I'm oh, talking to my wife. What are we? Uh, D100? Yeah. D100, please. And then right. afterwards, I'd like a D20. Okay. All D100. right, Rob. You yeah. roll for Harry, and I roll for... No, I'm just Oh no, seven. Harry! Harry's not. Oh wow! Look at all the seventies. seventies. This might be an interesting situation here, lads. <laughs> Hold oh, on, let me let me check the books. Let me check the scriptures. Let's see how the fuck ledger. you are. To the ledgers. Uh, everyone, roll me a d twenty as well to see what's getting replaced. So five yep. is the cursed short no. sword. I was going to try and get that. Wow. Did you already have a really good sword? Yeah, but this one's cursed. <laughs> uh, Vannon, re-roll that d20, please. Cursed make things more fun. The plus one shield disappears. The warpine chainmail disappears with that eight. <laughs> no! Oh. <laughs> I get fucked. Nine, ten. Damn it. Twelve. The King Arms ointment disappears. Oh, that's ah. huge. And the three Long Strider scrolls are gone. That's not much of a loss. Yeah, that's not much of a loss, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no. That's, 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 that's honestly right. good riddance. Good riddance. We, we, we can oh, live with yeah. yeah, totally. So, let's see here. Am I going to need some of you to re-roll? That's the million dollar right. question. <clears throat> I, I'm on roll. I'm not rolling dice, even though they're, they're you know digital. <laughs> okay, so let's see here: seventy-seven, seventy-nine, seventy-three, and seventy-eight. <laughs> yeah, ignore the twenty-four. It's okay. Don't worry about it. And the twenty-four. <laughs> yeah, ignore it. Uh, I'm loving this. I'm loving all of the seventies. That's making. Life really fucking difficult. <laughs> I mean, we can re-roll them if you want. I mean, you know. Uh, that might be the case in a second. You don't know. Uh, let's see. You know what, Professor? Re-roll the D one hundred, please. I could just pick that. Do I roll yours? Damn it. <laughs> Professor. Okay. I think you done left again. Hmm. 
Okay, that's that's actually funny. King Ong's ointment comes back. Ah. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Nope. How many uses? About? All five. Nice. <laughs> Somebody bought it. I was like, oh, I thought this was oregano. Never mind. <laughs> Someone bought it. Clearly, they were, it was good, so she got another. Mm. There you go. See here. Demand. There you go. Show and supply and demand. Interesting. Okay. This is an interesting one. I'm not sure how this is going to play out. Also, I didn't we loot a bunch of stuff from those dudes that we need to sell? Yes, it's on the bag of holding. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a terrible, large amount of stuff. Did we got some stuff, yeah? Yeah, something's better than anything since we're all yes. poor, poor. We're D and D poor. Speak for yourself. I think Dune's actually poor. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that that appointment cost me a whole arm, quite literally. Yeah, like I said, we're D and D poor. <laughs> How much was it? Because I wasn't actually. A hundred and fifty gold. Sounds about right. Yeah, it hurt a lot. <laughs> My coin purse also became a lot lighter. Got a new potion. Oh, did you want Adwin to re-roll? Please. Thought I heard he came back. Oh, he did? Oh, okay, he... No. he came back for the... Yeah, sorry, we got some, we have some stuff going on here. My wife keeps talking to me. I've been here. What, what uh, do you re-roll the D100. Re-roll the D100? Yeah. Is that bacon 62, in your mouth? It looks like. Is that what? Mm, Is that bacon? bacon? No. God, I wish it was bacon. I made bacon. Bacon. Oh, bacon. Ooh, hell yeah. 52. 52. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Fifty-two. Huh. See here. Yeah, that goes there, technically. Not a lot. Seven short swords, four mm. crossbows. Yeah. Hope we want to sell that chain mail or not. Ooh, custom longbows. I mean, chain mail's worth quite a bit. Yeah, armor's worth decent. Mm -hmm. Javelins. Yeah, we can make some scrap out of. Actually, that. Dune should be ha having those javelins so he can do something when he can't hit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. Or he could just be a more versatile combatant. Ooh. So, so he can okay. get wrecked. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can die. Not really. Which is die. what you want. I mean, yes. <laughs> okay. See, do we have everything? Du, du, du. That's one, two, three, four. Oh. Which was that one, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Hectic, that's really loud. Is that Alexa? 
No. That is for some it. reason they have the TV turned up to 80 in the other room and listening to something. Hmm. Don't know why. <laughs> the, not they can't hear it already. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. You know what? Sure. Let's go for that. Let's let's make this interesting. God, do I actually want to give you guys that, or at least have access to that? Hold on, which one is it? Who knows if we could buy it? Yeah, we <laughs> Can we afford it? Yeah, that's the magic question, ain't it? Mm. Let's be okay. sold Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> don't tell uh, us actually, if you do you know add what? it, don't tell us what it is. We'll just be surprised yeah, yeah. when you yes. get the page. Okay, hold on. So here's <sighs> Okay. Wow, oh, he's so sad. <laughs> he's so sad. Oh, oh, hold on, no. Okay, so this is what I have to put down so you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> because no. otherwise people are gonna jump right on this motherfucker. Uh, uh I need to what is it? Good re-roll one. something. Oh no, I- I'm I'm worried. Please roll low. Okay, I, I can live with that. It's okay. I actually need to also roll that. Hmm. Fuck. Okay. Oh god, I'm worried. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Never seen this come into play before. Ooh. Well, let's take a look. So I have updated Freya's shop as you guys make your way in. She'll look over. Oh. Hello there. Pleasure to see you all again. How can I help you today? Well, you know, we were just... Stop by, came in last night, figured we'd stop by. See uh, if you found anything new and interesting before maybe we head out. I uh, got a few things that came in a few days ago. Um... Matter of fact, there was something that came back from those mines that you headed down from. Oh, yeah, what was that? Uh, one lucky son of a gun that apparently got out. Uh, him and his group decided to go down there. Apparently they saw you go down and come back with a fair amount of stuff, including... Apparently one of your own, uh, clearly not living anymore, but apparently they disregarded that and thought themselves better. Mm. Apparently they thought wrong, because the <laughs> only one that came back out was the one that uh, handed me the staff. And she'll point over to a snake-headed staff resting inside a cabinet. Do you look an item? Is that a snake head on that staff? That is a snake head. Mm. People are weird. Uh, Not exactly one for snakes, so I can't exactly say which. Uh. You have any idea what it does? No clue. They just handed it to me and said that they no longer needed it and thought they'd do better doing some farming. Good for them for turning their life around and doing something mm. productive. And so mm. getting their friend killed. Her friend. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Daisy looks all depressed. Well, either way, I've made sure to put a price tag on it to make sure that whatever funds. Wait a minute! You're charging like five hundred for this thing. You don't even know what it does. Well, yes, because it's magical. And not many staffs come my way. Yeah, all right. Uh, I guess that's fair. Also had uh, these two bags come in. Uh, I had some ointments that 
apparently was quite popular, mm-hmm. so I got another mm-hmm. got a bag of some form of dust. Rather than not expel the contents in here, it does clog up the sinuses a little. And mm-hmm. then I had uh, this boy come in with uh, this bag. It just plops down a tiny little bag where you can see there are small contents inside. What's in, what's, what's in that? Uh, uh, I wouldn't be so sure. Uh, they just look like seeds or beans or something like that. A bag of beans? Let me guess, they're magic? Yes, they are. What? Uh-oh. Did, did the boy tell you they were magic, Freya? Yes, and I <laughs> checked them, and each six all of right. them are all having magical qualities. Although, of course, I can't exactly pinpoint what exactly they do. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, we also got some boots that came in. Although, uh, they are on the more fresher side. I know you were looking at the chain mail the last time you were here. Someone already took it. Wouldn't that there was a fine set of armor? I do also have one more potion. Uh, more of the fire resistant type. It would be useful. I know one of yours has a more cindering touch. Just give a slight. Uh, I get it. Turn around and look at Van and like, yeah, mm-hmm. sure does. I take a bow. <laughs> no, don't bow for that. I he smack him by the head. I'll smack him by the head. Hell up. We got cursed. He burned us almost three times. We almost all died. Yeah. So, so what's the moral of the story? I look over to Van. <laughs> My arms crossed like a disappointed dad. <laughs> well, there's a couple oh, things no. that seem nice, but I don't know. I only got like 170 gold. Don't we have some stuff? Can we try and you want to maybe take some stuff off our hands? Yeah, I am kind of broke. Well, I do have coin, given the fact that people have been purchasing things, so I could probably take some things off your hands. You want to pull out the bag? Yeah, I'll whip it out. We got... What do we got to sell? The shield. Uh, or are we keeping the shield? Yeah. Shield. Or are we going to keep that? We could probably sell some of the torches. I don't think we need 18. Yeah, Never I don't know. think we need 18 torches. Seven short Four swords. Torches. Some chain mail, two custom longbows. Those are that's a high sell dollar those, item. Sell there. those bad boys. Unless Harry has <clears throat> wants one. We could sell the potion of harming. Harry yep. too big for Harry. He's that's more into big. guns. Yeah, I prefer the big bangs instead of just uh quiet now. I'm I'm liking I'm liking this. Just pass the gun at his side. Oh, we should also give the Two necklaces of loyalty, so Freya can dispose of them. Two light crossbows. And we, some leather armor. We never figured out what the darkish green, blackish liquid in the vial was. Did we? Oh, I, I, can, I can identify it. See what it is. I don't know, it was poison. I, kind of, I was kind of hoping yeah. it was that. Do you know it's poison? Because it doesn't say it's poison. But if it so, is poison, I was kind of hoping to use it. What are you going to use poison what? for, Professor? Put on some bolts. That added effect. Well, I'm going to look at the liquid and see what Isn't it is. Isn't that what your magic's for? I, but yes, magic can produce some effects, but poison would be an extra effect on top of that. Uh, are you talking luck. about the... Which vial are you talking about? Dark right green, blackish liquid in a vial that I'm pretty sure we found in the hag's hut. And I think that, it was in the chest. Uh, that was taken by the professor. Oh, that's the one I got. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll delete that. Oh, that thing you, you were using. Yep. So it's longer there, then. Yeah. No, He's it's no longer there. 
<clears throat> okay, so that I shouldn't be there. Uh, you... I don't think he used the last use, did you? I, I believe he did. I, I used one, I've got two more. Oh, you inventory. applied them. What? You applied them to the arrows. Yeah, yeah, you? yeah, during downtime. Okay. Or, um, I say, like downtime and a short rest of it, or long rest. I will say, those are no longer applicable. Those are no. Uh, there's no more bolts. Yeah, but poison, poison dries out after a time. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but I figured I did the last ones right before that. Uh, the last fight we're in is because everything was like undead and shit. I didn't really get a chance to use them. Can I see the arrows and see from the dried residues if I know what type of thing it was? You can certainly try. I want to try. You're asking Roll the me... professor for one of his arrows? Yes. One of his I wanna... Yes, I want to try and identify it. Yeah, I'll show I'll show you one of the bolts I had it on. I mean, I imagine there's still some residue on it or something. I need a bit of residue, yes. Yeah. Give me a Give me a nature check, please. 16. Dried over, it's mostly just flakes and nothing really that you could get a solid grasp on to what exactly <clears throat> kind of poison this was or the source of it. But you do know that it it, it was rather potent. Well, Professor, whatever this was, that was quite potent. I shame. It might be. It's a shame I never got it. it. Yeah, it was a shame. I was hoping it'd last longer than that. Alright, so sell what? Eight torches. <clears throat> sell seven, seven short sword. swords. Sell the chainmail. How sure. about that other armor as well? Yeah, we'll sell that well, too. We're getting there. I'm going down the list. Two right. custom longbows. Two light crossbows. The potion of harming. And the leather armor. Yeah. yeah, I can keep the incense. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're yeah, giving her the potion of you, farming? Think, Dan, that's all I have in there. Go sell the potion of farming. As far as I know. Okay. We could. It depends um, on how much it's worth. I mean, we could. Might be able to find a use for it, too. Sorry, be right back. Uh, let's see here. So, it is acid. We might yeah, be able to um, get some out of that. The leather let's, armor, gotcha. Let's keep the shield. I might have a use for it at some point. But, yeah, okay. keeping the shield and the two javelinis. So, keeping the shield, okay. And the potion, and you're selling the potion of minor how, harming? How much is it worth? Uh, She will, the moment you pull out the potion, she just raises an eyebrow at it. And you can see she's definitely locked onto it. I see that's caught your eye, Freya. It is quite a nice potion. Very rare. Is that so? And do tell me, what does the contents do? Yeah, Professor, what do they do? So what, what was what? What's the question? What, what does, does the potion the do? do? What is, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you again. <laughs> what does it do? Oh, it's it's. I mean, as far as I know, um, I kind of like pull it out and cast like an expert eye over it. This is a potion of minor harming. It it potion essentially doesn't so much poison a person as it does do acidic damage to them. So, if I am to believe, it harms the drinker and not heals them, but it looks like a healing potion. Yes. And need I remind you who wanted to drink said potion before I saved their innards. Alright, I'm back. Well, <laughs> someone wanted now to drink it. Really. <laughs> who wanted to drink it? Liam Vannon. What just happened? <laughs> oh, it was Vannon. Sorry, I'm back. What just happened? We're talking about the <laughs> potion of Miter Army. Now Vannon wanted to drink it. Eh. <laughs> Dude, narrow eyeing him. You, he didn't drink it, did you? 
No, no he didn't drink. What are you talking about? <laughs> talking about the past, not right. Yeah, talking, talking about, about what happened yeah. when they unlocked it. It was like, oh, I could drink this potion, and then I'm like, no, I can heal you. Let us celebrate this all with a drink. Shots. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a that's the acid. <laughs> well, and I just hold him, hold him back. No, let him do it. Maybe the one thing's like this hard way. No, it, it's my duty to save their asses. <laughs> Well, in the case of all of these things, outside of your, let's see, seven short, so you're selling me seven short swords, the two long bows, the two light crossbows, the two javelins and the leather armor. But we're and keeping the, the jav uh, javelins, I thought. Yeah, we're keeping, yeah, we're the, keeping javelins. the javelins and, those, and, and the chainmail. Two necklaces of loyalty that we were going to yes. give her or something. Necklaces of loyalty. I'm pretty sure we gave those to her to dispose of it last time. Gotcha. I, don't one in here. I don't know if we got. Yeah. Did we pick the oh, other one up? We have to. There's, yes. There's we pick both. Okay. You place them down in front of her. She just stares at it. More of those. Yeah. I tried. Yeah, we, uh, killed them, we killed more of them. Tried to stop one of them from using it, but uh, Harry's really good with that new gun. Quite She'll... deadly. Re like walk behind, grab a pair of tongs, just grab the first one, walk to the back. You hear the sound of burning in the back of the uh in the back of the room. You see her come back, take the second one, and walk back one moment, quickly goes inside, more sounds of burning can be heard before she returns. Thanks. Anytime. Those were a scourge on this world. <laughs> They are not fine pieces, no. So, you said that you wish to sell the seven short swords along with the others. Let's see here. The custom longbows too, Rob? Yes, the custom okay. longbows as well. Uh, then are we selling the shield? shield? Uh, no, no, I'm keeping the Do shield. Do it need to. Okay. Eventually, maybe. And then it comes to the merchant's mm. fee, which would be that. Uh, you're selling the potion, yes? I'm curious about how much you'd pay Maybe, for it. Maybe. I think we just kind of want to price check it. Yeah, it is. It, it, as I said, it is, it is an oddity. Well, clearly my decision on the price would be <laughs> changed throughout time, so... Mm. One of you roll a persuasion check. Deal. I'll assist. Uh, Add advantage. Deal. Add advantage. Okay. And a d6. Oh, you're rolling it? Yeah. Hey. I said deal. Nope. Darn. Yeah, 21. Oh, damn. 21. Not bad. She'll look over at the potion, look over at you. 200 gold. The potion or for all of it? With the potion. Potion. The potion. Yeah, no, that seems fair. That's a deal. Yeah. Deal. She'll reach out, shake your hand. Oh, um, oh, yeah, deal. Quickly yeah. takes the potion under the counter and just smiles <laughs> slightly. Do I know why no. she was Insight so interested in check. it? Yeah, same. <laughs> Go ahead. With a D6. 27. <laughs> Hell yeah. He has intentions for this potion. Well, no crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah she, she was in. Uh, she has some very personal intentions. She had a bit of a flick to the eye. She has someone in mind for this potion. So when she saw that, let me. So basically, when she saw that potion, it's she had the same look in her eye like when I a table full of fish playing dice oh yeah gotcha okay good deal good job olive yeah good deal all right in concerns to the rest of your items ah uh, let's see here i can possibly 
take all of this for around about, let's say, 350. All right, so with the potion that puts us at 550. 550 gold pieces total. I mean, if you could, can we get that up to 400? Possibly it's more of a nice round number. I mean, if you look at all of it, oh, I'm sure we can it. drop it down to 400 total if you wish. No, the, no, the, the, I, 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 I covered cover the precious mouth. Ah, mm, mm, mm. It's, it's more round and it's easy, more easier to divide. What he wanted to say was 600. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Total. I was talking Isn't, about the equipment. Uh, your mouth's still covered. Mm, isn't that right, Professor? No. Yes. Uh, Professor, your mouth is currently cu- covered, and there is just muffling sounds coming from your mouth. Right now. <laughs> Can I? What do I need to roll to squirm out of that? Uh, that I'll, would be I'll, an acrobatics. Or I was going to say after I said. Long. I was going to say after I said, "Isn't that right, Professor?" Then I would let your mouth. Oh. Yeah, yeah six hundred mm-hmm. for all of it. I mean, I was talking about the equipment. Only. Mm-hmm. I, I assume mm-hmm. the deal with the potion was already struck. Professor, roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> no one can assist in this. This is him alone. Yep. Dang it. <laughs> I wasn't even going to bother to ask. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. Six hundred, and you do me a favor. Ooh. What's the thing? You just see her smile slightly. It has something to do with the potion we just sold you, Freya? No, okay. I can handle that myself. Okay, um, but you might be a little happy. I'm going to like you more and more, Freya. You just see her reach under the counter. And Professor, you see a all too familiar hunk of metal rest on top of the counter. Hell yeah. I need a new test room. Yes. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> I'll grab it quick. You just see her smile. Deal. <laughs> and this... she just places down, uh starts placing down platinum pieces. What changes it wisely? What why are you so made? giddy? Oh, this I mean you'll you'll see when I have you made any changes, Freya? Assume you have. Uh, I've made a few improvements. I should be able to be ignited, and with a little bit of luck, you should be able to throw it to your chosen target before it ignites. I'm oh, not this entirely thing sure. He almost blew us up yes. But uh, yes. I do believe he did say that the last time. Yes, I mean, it did work. Just. It was, it was. It could have been catastrophic. Well, it, it it worked. However, it was kicked away because apparently you decided the best place for it was it amongst your. Yeah, it falls at my feet again. Head. I'm gonna kick it again. Yeah, well, this one is is improved. See, I'm not the only one who tries to blow us up. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, no, but you've you got it the most. He tries. And so it is a, <laughs> and yes, you succeeded. How does this handle differently from the last prototype? It is probably best if you do not drop it, given the Ooh. fact that it now goes off on impact. Excellent. But it does need to be lit first, or no? Yes, it does. Yes. Okay, excellent. I'm excellent. still working on a fuse timer. It is still a little bit of an issue. Work in okay. progress, but again, still needs testing. Yeah, but this, this would have a similar effect as the last one? I would believe so. I did okay. add a little more oomph, a little more compaction to the cannon rock infusion. Uh, I did add a little bit more spunk to the projectiles. Not okay. entirely sure how that will work, but you are my guinea pig after all. Do you just see her smile widely? We are going to find out. Mm. I'll place it in like a, a like inner coat pocket of my All right. jacket I'm wearing. Now, let's see. Uh, 550 and let me... And she'll push over uh, 55 platinum pieces. Uh, Was it 600? 600. 
you see her raise a finger, reaching over to another bag, which is now labeled with gold, and starts placing down gold pieces in essential to change. Nice. And we'll push forward 50 gold in your direction as well. Were you preferring gold? I don't exactly have that much on me. Oh, no, moment. that's fine. That's fine. Put them work. Excellent. Where I can carry and... the most guys of gold. <laughs> Uh, anything else I can do business for you all? I think that was it. Um, actually, I would like. Do you have any inks that I could use to write in a book? Are you looking for more of the arcanist variety? I'm supposing yes. one for <laughs> writing scrolls and uh, arcanist. So yes. Cool parchment. Yes, yes, we do have the ointments, the incense, and uh, particular inks for that. We need a good amount of it. <laughs> well, we do sell ink wells for, I believe, two gold a piece. I think it has to be a specific type of ink. Yes, it is of that variety for using in two spell components. Okay. So I'll get enough for three. What, do you want me to go off of the one that's off the, the player's handbook, the pricing for that? Actually, let me do this once more. The ones of the spell variety are 15 gold pieces in ink. Well, I do apologize. Okay. So I want to need at least four because I want to do four spells. Very well. You will. I'm gonna write it into my my spell book. So I need that be uh, sixty gold. Sixty gold. All right. Perfect. I'll take those. Uh, she will also place down a few pieces of parchment in front of you. Uh, these come along included. So you have parchment that is enough for your uh, four ink wells. I don't really need the parchment because I'm going to write it all in my book. <laughs> all right. Now, anything else? You sold the anything. leather armor as well, right? The leather armor? We sold the leather armor and oh, yeah, the, I'm working on it and yeah. the chain shirt, yeah. right? Yes. Chain mail, nice. the leather, all of the short swords. Mm -hmm. Uh you sold the potion. Yep. Do we and want to spend this now or divvy it up? I think divvy it up unless there's what do we I mean there's a lot of nice up? things that she there, there is quite a few nice things. I bro, I put the breakdown in the roll twenty chat for what everyone's taking. That's including Harry. Sweet. So everyone gets nine gold, nine platinum, nine gold, and nine silvers. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. How does, Pretty much. How does that work? We get, we're getting six hundred gold. There's six of us. 600 gold, 600, yeah. Because I just take 55 divided by 6. And so, I mean, do, do you just want to do it like gold and everyone just take 100 gold and we just assume we broke it somewhere? Well, you're breaking it anyway with 1 gold, 6 silver. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, right. yeah, we, I, that'd just be easier. I guess everyone has 100 gold. Or 10 platinum. Make it even simpler. Everyone gets 10 platinum except for one person who gets five, uh, 50 gold and 5 platinum. Which I will say, Harry. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, that works out better. Nope. Nope. Yep. Now I have 20 platinum. Woo. What do you mean? You're not poor. You got 200 gold. money bags over here. Holy shit. Yeah. Each platinum is 10 gold. You are. No, it's five. Whoops, my mm. bad. No, you are Each rich, platinum... brother. Yeah, hold on. Did you give platinum to the cleric? No. Okay. Yeah, no. Platinum, one platinum is 10 gold. Oh, okay. <laughs> You got as much as I got. No, those yeah, I think boots we all nice. still have like. Pot I want to know what that staff does. The bag of beans is just hilarious. 
Dude, Dude, I was like, my champion might be good. The boots Winterland's good for what we're doing. <laughs> they're I'm interested they are in them. Situationally good, much like the clasps are situationally good. Okay. Our rings are good too. We don't really need them as much with our rings. That's true. Our rings do cover the cold quite nicely. Yeah, but not everybody got rings. No. My clasp will work fine with that. Oh, Freya, if yes, if you ever see someone with a book, and I ask Vanity to pull out one of the books to use as a reference for the cover, see any books with this symbol, please let me know. As a matter of fact, I have. Where exactly? Uh... There was a room of... Apparently, someone went far to the north, found a giant hand, and apparently they saw a book resting amongst a grave there. Uh-huh. Mm. A giant hand, you say? Yeah, to the north. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Quite deadly hand. Next to a grave. From my yeah, under- sounds familiar. My- must... My understanding, when they looked through it, uh, well, they looked through a spyglass, able to uh, get a good view of the situation beforehand that they didn't really have to interfere. But they did scribble down the symbol that they saw amongst the front cover, and it does seem familiar. All right. Oh, and I'll do a minor illusion of what Loose Feather looked like originally. If you see anyone with a sword that kind of looks like this, I'm interested as well. Uh, you would... Actually, no, you weren't told this, were you? It's not a sword you're looking for. The other part of the set is a shield. He always is sold. <laughs> Fair enough. She'll look at the blade, give it a once over. Were you intending on selling that? Oh, this? No, this is just an illusion. Just for uh, visual, visual, visualization per presentation purpose. Mm, it is quite the fine blade. Mm hmm. No, I'm not gonna. Let me use it for maybe if I find uh, a, a, a better one. Maybe. Well, if you ever find anything of the like, please do tell. I'd be glad to have it amongst my stock. Oh, you know, I wouldn't hold out on you, Freya. I would hope not. All right, no. boys, if you need any potions, make sure you uh, stock up before we head out. Um, just now, I'm going to hold it. The... It'll be fine. Pretty sure he said he's okay. <clears throat> All right, yeah, if nobody else is doing anything, are we ready to leave? Yeah. yeah, I'm good to go. Right. Well, stay safe out there. Um, just a little heads up. If you do intend on going back down into the mine, mm -hmm. perhaps keep an eye out for whoever went down there, whatever remains there may be. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, oh, is uh, Three Strings around? Or... Three Strings? Uh, yes. Yes, I do believe he is around. Thanks. Sorry, guys. Uh, I gotta go find him real probably quick. Probably the lonely solid. Yes. Yeah, I'll head back to Lonely Sonnet. 
All right. The rest of you. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. KB's AFK. Okay, I'm thinking. Loki's I'm going needed. to the Temple of Angius. Mm -hmm. Since I'm help guard here, I'll go with her. All right. Both heading to the Temple of Angius. Mm hmm. And on the way, um, I was like, Daisy, how did it go with uh, that person you were speaking to last night? Well, better than expected. But I'm still uneasy of everything I saw inside that tree. Hmm. <laughs> Did you mention that to her? I really want to know yes. that snake out of staff does. I the nice. didn't fully explain what I saw, but I used Horn of Silent Alarm certain ID. names, certain things, and definitely caught both her and Zenith's attention, that's for sure. Her and Zenith. <clears throat> they know each other? Yes. Oh, yes, they go way back. Wow. They uh, are part of a settlement, actually, west, a little northwest of here, near the uh, the plant shit. I like having these in have cool flying cloaks, though. little magical items that might be useful for things. Flying cloaks. Mm-hmm. Does that ring a bell to me? Uh, give me a history check. Oh, great. I'm so great at these. You are familiar okay. that a lot of a lot of the neighboring tribes and a lot of the neighboring villages each have their own expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that Bochiana has their carts. It's more than likely Annie Kotal has their cloaks. Mm -hmm. um, you haven't heard of natives flying. Mm -hmm. in your area but you do remember uh one particular native town slash city of in many cases due to the larger size of it that kang ital uh did have an expertise in uh warships and those are more of the air variety Okay. You've never hmm. heard of natives flying, but you have heard of them using flying pieces of transportation. Okay. Uh, well, I've never heard of flying people, but I have heard of flying ships. Wait, ships that can fly? Yes. Um, I've never seen them. I've only heard of them. That's but amazing. From a uh, nearby settlement uh, up where I'm from, Kangatal. They have flying ships. Kangatal is essentially the far western uh, town slash city that was under the large mountain. Oh, uh, right. I was there. Yeah, right. If I, I'm assuming since you know I went there, I probably would have seen one. You've seen them far in the distance, mostly like oh. silhouettes in the night sky. Okay. Very much like balloon ships or airships. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do seem to be powered by the local cannon rock uh, that seems to be used as some form of fuel. Okay. Um, now that I am thinking about it, I didn't really get a good view of them. I'd only see them, you know. Off in the distance, but I'm guessing with how their power it is with the kind of rock, not rest. That's right. Uh, it's a shame they're at the other side of the continent because we have to go to do a little favor for Grump and it's just to the mouth of Zana. Oh, if Damn, we do it go. would have been nice to see one. Yeah. I'm in no hurry to get back there. West, but we have to well, find one day. some point. Maybe. 
Uh, as you guys continue to walk, given that the lonely sonnet is closer. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Olive, you step through the front doors of the lonely sonnet. You can see that Mr. Jem is behind the counter serving a few of the nearby customers. It's getting to that point of mid morning. Uh, getting to maybe closer to uh, noon at this point. And you can see that Three Strings is plucking away at a loot near the fireplace, looking into the flames, but not seeming to uh, look away from it. You just see him plucking away. You'll notice that a drink is resting next to him untouched. I'm going to try and sneak up behind him. Again, just plucking away. Doesn't seem to notice you continuing to stare into the flames. I'll lean my head slowly over his shoulder. What are you doing? So oh, stringy. You seem just immediately turned, <laughs> just quickly jumps to the side, almost jumping out of the chair. Uh holding the loot up in the air like a weapon uh, and just quickly oh oh hi here. hi yeah it, um, what you doing just thinking about what just some stuff uh -huh. uh, you, you just see him quickly just go back to the chair trying to restring uh, you can see him now. He's actually he's trying to retune the loot to this point that you can hear like the slow boing, like slowly <laughs> mm -hmm. tightening strings. Uh, you can see again the cup next to him is completely filled, like it had been bought and very much like yourself, not touched. Uh, you see, like the froth has completely gone down to almost still. Uh, he's clearly been here for a while. Just, just thinking. I'm gonna slowly pull something out of my bag, and then minor illusion. I know it's not really what the spell does, but minor illusion to look like I have two boxes, one in each hand, and one of them is concealing the thing I pulled out of my bag. Okay. Hey, three strings. Pick a hand. You you see him sigh slightly, just looking over his shoulder. I'm not really in the mood. Oh for come him. on! Look, I almost died trying to save your butt to find out that somebody else saved it before I got there. You you, you just see him not say anything at that point, just staring at you, and looks extremely guilty. When you say that, you say, "Oh, uh, he was one of the dumb fucks that went down into the mine, huh?" He was the dumb fuck that went the down dumb, the mine. Yes, okay. I was like, "What did you say, though?" The right one, and oh, uh, you should have picked left. And I'll reveal the left hand has his broken loot. Oh. Oh, you just see him like dejectedly, like looking down at the broken loot, looks down at the one that he's currently restringing. That's where it went. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was like an heirloom or meant something to you, but I figured I'd give it back. I, yes. Does you want to buy it from I, me? You, you just see him like look lost at that point. You just see him like reaching into his pocket. Uh, uh, which are clearly empty. No, I'm just However, kidding. Just... Here you go. You can have it back. Uh, thank you. Thank you kindly. And yeah. you just see him quickly move over, and the moment he brings his fingers along the strings, you see the loot slowly beginning to rebuild, reform, and reconstruct. Yeah, no, I was going to try and get it fixed for... Oh. Well, hey, that worked out. All right. Uh... Try not to be so sad. Don't worry. I didn't die because of you, but as someone who's been dead, it's not that bad. So whatever it's, you're it's, 
mulling over. You'll be fine. It's fine. I didn't really deserve the name of Three Strings anyways. I'm not him. I can never be. Yeah, your loot had four strings. I didn't understand what the three strings came from. Uh, no. That's the thing. It was three strings. It was his. For a time. You just see him again looking over towards the fire. Well, yeah, you lost just... it, and then I picked it up, and I gave it back to you. No. Now it's yours again. No. You don't understand. <laughs> I took the name. I took the reputation. I took the stories. I took everything. And I'm not him. I can't be him. I'm just an apprentice of his. And he gave me the loot and said it. I would do good. And then I go along and I fucking jump into a fucking mine with some fucking drunken dwarves that thought it was a good idea to go down there and I broke his loop and I lost it. You're right. Your first mistake was following drunk dwarves. That was your first mistake, seeing as how you're not one. Of course they're going to go down into a mine. They're dwarves. Like, come on. Well, they told me they needed some inspiration and some form of distraction to bring whatever the heck those creatures are down there to a certain location because I'm able to tent my voice down and cause distractions and I didn't do so well and then we ended up going deeper and then we I don't remember much after that look I don't know of any other three strings you're the only three strings I know and as far as I can tell, you do a pretty good job on that thing. And for the dwarves, you could have given them a goat and they'd figure that was a pretty good distraction for whatever was down there. All right. So, I mean, you were pretty brave. Yeah, you messed up. But hey, trust me, you see the people I've been with? They mess up a lot too. Anyway, you got your, you got your loot back and you'll be just fine. So get your head out of your butt, finish your drink. And play them a song for morning. You hear a soft sigh escaping him. The soft tune of the three stringed lute slowly beginning to build within the air. As you do see a few of the nearby patrons look over a slight hint of a smile on some of their faces, almost like hearing a song that they haven't heard in a long time. Uh, there is a general calmness slowly beginning to build within the tavern. And you see him just look over in your direction. Well, I don't have much, but perhaps you could make use of this. You see him reach into his pocket and hold out a golden card. Oh, um, you know, I'm more of a dice lady, but I've been all right with cards. Sure. No oh, minor illusion geez. behind him. Three strings, three strings, three strings. Just chanting softly. He'll, he'll, he'll look over in the direction of the fireplace, which was directly behind him, just like looking at the flames, like, what in the world? Yes, the fire is chanting <laughs> his name. Softly. Uh, but he will hand you the golden card and go back to his music as the lonely sonnet begins to fill with music once more. I'll head back to the group. <clears throat> As you walk away, you hear the sounds of giggling laughter. The car disappears. You have gained yourself a joker. Yay! Now I'll remove that broken piece of junk from my inventory. Meanwhile, still within Freya's shop. Yes. Professor. Yes. You see Freya's going through some of her ledgers, quickly looks over in your direction. Oh, uh, was there something else I could do for you, Professor? Yes, yes, I was hoping you may have a few components I can use to concoct some sort of poison to coat the end of crossbow bolts with. 
preferably one that has a little longevity to it once it's, they've been coated. Well, most poisons don't really last a long time, given the nature that they usually dry out in a matter of hours after being applied. There is poisonous oil, however, which does last a little longer, perhaps maybe a couple of hours instead of a couple of minutes. Okay. However, it is more of an applicable uh, solution if you're wishing for a longer term. Uh, I don't exactly have a lot of materials for strong poisons, per se. If you gave me some time with the potion that you have given me, I could perhaps make an offshoot version that could be applied. Um, sure. However, there is something that I could help you with. You, you see her quickly go over to a nearby stack of books, uh, reaching over to one that she seems to have Clearly pulled in and out uh, on multiple occasions, it seems. The dust gathering on most of the other books, while this one seems relatively clear of it. She pulls out the large book and quickly makes her way, stepping onto the stool and going onto the front counter in front of you and laying the book in front, opening pages over pages. You see notes upon notes, uh, small scribblings, Attached pieces of paper and parchment here and there are littering most of these pages. However, she eventually comes to a final page and points, ah, this, this here. And she'll point down to what seems to be a almost femur-looking mushroom. A pale white stalk that seems to branch out on both ends to create a bone-like structure. Uh, however, on either side of these ends seem to be a dark, almost sickly brownish looking color in comparison to the pale stem. Okay. This is known uh, simply as the Devil's Tongue. Um, however, it goes by another name simply known as Knuckle Dragger Root. Uh, it is usually known to inhabit the nearby surrounding areas between Boshian and Inkotal. Um, it has seemed to have been more of an original location, but it is more of an invasive uh, fungus that is near the oasises that rest between the two uh, smaller towns slash native villages. It okay. is relatively... It is poisonous to the touch. <laughs> That's good to know before I pick it up. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it is known to create uh, a sort of numbing sensation to the skin. However, um, when resting within contact for maybe up to a minute, it is said that the poison is seeped in through the skin and in directly to the bloodstream, which is rather direct and extremely painful to the one who ends up on the receiving end. Uh, however, it does have very high poisonous qualities that can be turned into some rather potent poison. Excellent. You'll probably need a daisy to take care of this particular form of harvestation, mainly due to the fact that she seems to have a knack for the flora, but also due to the nature of the rather nasty uh, indigenous folk that seem to try and protect it. It is okay. mostly a form of food for a growing uh, mycenid colonization uh, that seems to make home within the oasises. It might be best to be on the quiet side. However, I know that given the poor dear's uh, 
fondness for more heavier armors. That's not exactly the fondness that you'd probably go for. Yeah, she's Discretion not is probably the best option, but... Well, you do you in the means of trying to procure it. You said this is more common near Oasis than it is... So we wouldn't find this, say, in the open desert? No, you would not okay. find this in the open desert. It needs a form of hydration. Okay. Uh, it, when put into the direct sun and dried, it can remove the uh, poison-like entities inside. It seems like heat removes the poison and kills it off inside, creating a more edible version of the fungus. Okay. Um, would you happen to have possibly maybe a jar with a lid or something that this could be placed in? To be, of course, well, yes. Keep it uh, safe and preserve it? It would, of course, cost you maybe around about five silvers for in exchange. Sure. Yeah, I'll reach into my pouch and plop five silver on the counter. She'll walk over to a nearby shelf, taking hold of a reasonably head-sized jar with a solid lid at the top and resting it in front of you. This should do uh, more than enough. Thank you. And you, you said you were going to try to distill something here as well. How, how long do you think that'll take you? Well, that depends whether I put all my research into this fine potion or perhaps looking into other means of magical creation. Whatever you think is best, Bray, you're the expert. Well, I was hoping to perhaps get another, maybe another set of that war pine. I knew the group was quite interested in it the first time. Sure. However, if that is all that uh, I can help you with, that is sadly all that I know. That was... Excellent. Thank you very much. And um, I'll try it next time you see me. Hopefully I can return one of these mushrooms or multiple of them to you. Yes, and do give me the details of whatever research your Tusk does uh, give oh, out. Oh, yes. And make sure it does not land on the legs of your companions. I did add quite a bit. Really? Okay, <laughs> that's, that's good to know. I'll try my best. I'll like, give her a little wink as I turn to leave. Excellent. Call it, yeah, um, have a nice day. Were you here as well, or where were you going? Yeah, I probably would have stayed with the Professor. <laughs> All right. You see another individual stepping inside, looking over at some of the items that are on display. We like you to go back to your business. Okay. I just return to the end unless we got something else we need to do. All right. Going back to the temple on the coast. Angius's temple is open wide. Uh, you can see Terraform's obsidian temple is also open wide at the top blazing. Uh, you can see a familiar face resting in the temple of Ina and Aura, the Twins of Fate, currently looking over towards the statue. Who is it? Uh, you see a familiar pale white-skinned uh, dragonborn. Ah. Same adornments of the Lord's Alliance. Uh, you do see maybe two or three other Lords Alliance guards mm -hmm. keeping a close eye on the Dragonborn, but he seems to be relatively focused towards the statue in the center. I walk on over. <laughs> you say hello. Uh, I'll right behind her. You both approach. You see two of the guards begin to step over as if to intercept. However, the voice calls out, No, no, please, let them come. 
I know who they are. They have no intelligence, uh, no inter bad intentions, dear boys. Come, I fear your presence. I fear your footsteps. Come closer. Nice um, to see you again, Ragan. Uh, I'm kind of shadowing behind Daisy, like shadowing over her just to be like a bodyguard, kind of. It has been a while since I've heard that voice, but I do not remember the names. But mm. I do remember the feelings and the steps that you have on the ground. It is good to feel that you are doing well. Name's Daisy, but it's good to see you're doing well as well. Daisy, right. Well, I have heard great things. I have heard that the dragon and whatever controls it has been felled. However, yes. I will be keeping my men near the flora for the time being. I wanted to ask, how goes it now, now that the tender of the grove has been dealt with? After the tender of the grove, I could only assume to be the dragon and the one that was controlling it. Yes, the hag. Yes. My understanding has been that the ever-growing flora has been relatively dormant. However, any presence that seems to get close to the vine still seems to find only aggression when getting close. Mm. It has been relatively uh, understood that it is still active, it is still alive, and clearly its intentions are still clear. It does not wish to stop now, and given recent reports, it is slowly awakening. Wonderful. Mm. Do you know anything about the Seven Sisters? Mostly just folk tales of the natives. It is something beyond even the Von Intinium, from what I believe. Mm. For it is believed that the Seven Sisters were the ones that created the Von Intinium. It is said that the everlasting blood that caressed the lands and burned whatever remains of this land, the ones that slowly and first came about these lands were the Bonantinium seeking to either take over where powerful creatures once stood and now the power vacuum had to be taken up by another mantle. My belief is the Bonantinium were the creations of the Seven Sisters to perhaps take their place should they have to disappear. Mm. Well, I will say that any forces dealing with the, uh, the growth should be on the lookout in case a new shepherd is appointed to the grove. We will Seems. make sure that we will add additional forces in case of any additional progression or aggression of the flora will be held back. I will be sure to speak to the Ashen Grove, and perhaps he too will bring reinforcements into the question. I don't know how much... Each faction shares information with each other, but that hag that we dealt with, more likely than not, may have been the cause of the original explosion and expansion of the volatility of these binary. And my worry is, if the vision I had is true, 
then eventually it will continue unless dealt with properly. And what, Daisy, do you suggest that the other factions do in this? For now, the only My logical option. Well, is sorry, go ahead. That the Lord's Alliance and the Emerald Enclave have only made this union due to the needs of trying to create a formation and connection to this land. We wish to keep in good standing with the natives, as well as keep our roots tethered on the lands, even though the old man does not wish to us to be uh, allied in such a means. Indeed. I only say it because the fact that it may continue to grow could be a problem. And I just don't want people losing their lives unexpectedly. You and me both, Daisy. You and me both. It is the Lord's Alliance that seeks out the needs of the common folk. We are the first bastions, and usually the last. So, I understand your compassion. It is without saying that Barristan, the rampant charge, Cornisto, has no interest with putting his hooves on the mainland. He'd rather stay over there where his power and influence is strong. He seems to have taken a little bit of a closer standing on the nearby island uh, to the south east of here. Apparently there's been rumors of some form of snake-like entities that he has a slight distaste for. They had decided to create a small foundation and a create a small civilization on the island, which he has decided to remove. If you wish to speak with him, that would be my best option of where to find him. In I see. concern to Valtine, she is not going to step away from her Colosseum anytime soon, given that's with the general gathering of coin, so does her influence over Winspear. Understandably so. Between you and me, it seems that Valtine is seeking to become a stockholder. Hmm. Money does bring power in social circles. Yes, the issue is, is a stockholder cannot be removed. One of them must fall for another to take their place. So it is a question of who exactly she wishes to uphold. How many stockholders are they? Three, from my understanding. There is Wendo Trick, the Master of Trade. There is Uinus, the High Guild Master of Winspear, and of course, Racket Pirate Hunter, the leader of the battalion of the HDM and current Master of Transportation. These three have the highest power within Winspear, not only due to manpower, but also their personal influence. They had quite a reputation back in the kingdom, it seems. Hmm. Uh, for notes, in the handouts of Discord, you will notice that there are three portraits of the stockholders of Vinspear. And you oh. have met one of them before. Yes, Racket. With that fine pirate hat and a very fine mustache. Indeed. 
Hmm. Well, hopefully, someone can keep a check and balance on her power. If not, who knows? Well, my understanding is the Harpers usually aren't the ones that try and take over. So perhaps it is not exactly their intentions, but hers. Exactly my point. Hmm. Perhaps I can look into a few things for you. Hmm. If you can do the same. Oh, I have a friend who's good at finding out the information. Oh, let her know. In exchange, I would be glad to keep my ears as open for any influence and changes throughout Winspear. In exchange, I need a favor of yours. What is it? There's rumor that there is an individual within respite. I'm not entirely sure who. I'm not entirely sure why. But this individual here is not exactly supposed to be here. There's been rumors of a recent escape from the Windspear's darkest uh, darkhold. The darkhold is the local uh, prisons of sorts but it is also known to be an asylum. Hmm. A recent escape with a more destructive goblin caused this individual to escape as well, and recent rumors has been that he has been sighted here. This madman, he calls himself the Lost Prophet. He seeks to find an influence here, from my understanding, but my connections here and my ears here have been deafened. Due to the acts of Benin, I am unable to use my influence here and try and find this individual. I have been trying to speak with Benin, but of course, my attempts have fallen on deaf ears. Yeah. My understanding is that he has disappeared and is somewhere within. I'm not sure. I am sure that in recent times he has used his influence to make people go completely insane by his words. Uh, taking people within the night and somehow commanding them into his following. I am going to remain here as long as I can until Benin casts me out, but I would like for some extra ears on the ground. I'll see what we can dig up. That would be most appreciated. Now, I believe you have business to attend to. Don't let this, this old dragonborn take your time. No, oh, not at all. It's pleasant to mm. talk. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, you are a good your company, day. Daisy. And you as well, the one who stands behind her. Yeah. All right, then. Let's go. Right. <laughs> You can just hear on the cusp of your hearing. Ah, Dune. Good name. Smile on my face. Follow Daisy. You make your way over. Uh, the Temple of Injus is there. The familiar Arc Priest is standing at the altar. You can see a few individuals amongst the pews. However, she seems to be creating a ceremony of sorts. Uh, on the altar, placing down incense, gathering of branches and leaves. I wait for her to finish, and then approach. Uh, she seems relatively quiet, 
uh, not moving, but uh, hands together in a form of prayer. Uh, but the moment you step forward, she will slowly turn. Ah, you have returned. Welcome. Yeah. I have a question in general about Ingeus. Before you do. Mm -hmm. You there. Mm. The one that I tended to last night. I do hope your arm is readily and sorted. No I ill effects, just, I hope. I flex my arm a little bit. <clears throat> just wonderful. No ill effects. You can see there is a slight patch of bare skin where the necrosis seemed to have burned away some of the hair. Mm. But apart from that, it's relatively cleaned and healed over. Right. That's fine to me. Yeah. Excellent. Ah. How can I help you with the knowledge of Indias today? Um, Daisy, I'll be back in just a moment. And Very well then, then we'll go to the statue of Indias and send a prayer. And I'll go, has Indias ever been connected? To the Seven Sisters. You see the Arch Priest immediately raise her eyebrows and quickly hush you. We do not talk about them here. I see. Uh, you see her looking around at some of the other pews, it seems the other individuals have not noticed the conversation. And she will quietly beckon you to the side room. I will follow. Do you feel in your prayer? Both of them step to the side. The door closes, leaving you in front of the statue. Once I'm done with my prayer, I'll... Stand up, and then I'll... I won't go into the room, but I'll just stand outside the door as a like, standing guard. Guard the door? Yeah. Gotcha. She will turn around, displaying the fountain of crystal uh, clear water resting within the large stone uh, chalice in front of you. We'll slowly circle around. <coughs> uh, wrap her fingers. Yes. What exactly do you wish to know? What connections does Indias have to the Seven Sisters? Why does Bocheon have a tree that apparently is both connected to Indias and the Seven Sisters? It is said that Indias did not come from these lands. The Groven Queen is the Queen of the Feywild. Therefore, her main influence is there. However, after the purge of the First Flame, it is said that a crack within the realms was broken open. A small tear was made. A small tear had been created. A channel between this material plane and the fate. It is said that when the purge of the first flame happened, that Ingeus stepped through the rift and tears only to send forth her influence to try and rebuild and reconnect to revitalize whatever remains of the land. It is said that her influence not only touched all living things, but whatever remains of the flora that still lives within the lands of Esrena. It is said that with every tree and every root, she can send her influence out and cast eyes, allowing her influence to spread. But it is also said that she was not the one to create the trees. 
she was not the one to create the roots. She was only there to influence them. It is said that the ones that created the first trees and the first roots of Esrena were the Seven Sisters. I see. Hmm. Do you know the Seven Sisters were evil in any sense? She takes a moment to try and contemplate the question, try and think it over before eventually she nods. It said that the first sister was not the kindest, but it was the fifth sister that was the cruelest. The ninth was the nicest. The seventh was the most empathic. Second, she loved war. And sixth, to only to keep it. Keep the peace, should I say. And the last, the fourth, she was quite the interesting one. It is said that she was the influence and the creation of whatever remained of that northern peak of Winspear. I see. It is a reason why the natives do not trust the colonists with such information. It is because we know that the only reason the kingdom and the empire came here was to gain more power. The issue is... What happens if the power is strong enough to control you in retaliation? I see. Well, that will be it for now. I have things to think about. Thank you very sure much. You if you have any questions, I'd be glad to try and help. But... I do not follow the seven. No mm. one has for a long time. Yes. Understandably so. Well, I will leave you to your things. Thank you again. She will bow her head, allowing you to exit. Dune, the door opens beside you. Daisy stepping out. You got what you needed? Yes, and more, I think. Mm -hmm. Alright. Let's head back to the group. I think all of oh. might be interested in something I have to say. Before we go, I do mm -hmm. have a question. Did she say anything about the first seed of the Groban Queen? I did not ask about anything regarding that, no. Okay. okay. Well, let's go then. Let's go. All right. Both of you make your way out, returning to the Lonely Sonnet. Unless anyone else had any intentions to do anything else, everyone will gather up. Uh, it's reaching almost a good early afternoon at this point as everyone regathers towards the Lonely Sonnet. There are a few patrons inside gathering lunch and 
uh, a little bit of drink here and there. There is a gentle oh, sound be. of music coming from the fireplace as three strings seems to mm. quietly be playing. So, Olive. Yes, Daisy. What all do you know about the leader of your faction? The leader of the cricket? Depends on which one you're talking about. Mm, the captain. I know enough. What do you need? Well, I've heard some interesting information from a friend that a certain faction leader might be looking to become one of the stockholders of Windspear. And what's the name of this faction leader? <laughs> it's the uh, Air Genasi lady. Valentin. All right, what's that got to do with me? Well, you are rather good at gathering information, better than I. So when next we meet, or rather go to Windspear, thought you could help and uh, gather some information. Well, what all you hear? You, someone said this Valentine lady's trying to become a shareholder of Windspear? Yes, and it may require one of the other three to be removed. Right. And they cannot be removed, they must fall. Yeah, that doesn't Give that me a history weird. check, please. Oliver or Daisy? Me. Oliver. Okay. Enjoy that. Mm. I will not be adding a D6 to this. Because okay. Olive doesn't know crap about history of the area. <laughs> um, It's not history of the area, but history of your faction. <clears throat> uh, You have heard of a few attempts on your captain's life before? Yeah, comes with the territory comes with the territory and you've always assumed that it comes with the territory but you have heard a few times that there have been attacks and genuine like ambushes when it comes to the captain in many cases where you've heard of stories of people trying to attack the captain but nothing remained of whatever uh, tried to attack him. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the main story goes is whoever goes after the pirate hunter gets hunted. Right. He's kind of my role model. Um. And you know, maybe once or twice, you've actually seen your captain ever get serious. Mm. He's always been a very laid-back individual, very, like, uncaring mm -hmm. to a point where he's, like, very kicked back, like, not really caring for anything else apart from what he needs to do. So the idea that if someone ever tried to go for him and then they disappear does kind of click that he does have some form of power. Right. Especially if Roguish is under his boot, like mm -hmm. uh, uh you do you do know that Roguish is very quiet and very stalwart. Uh very in line whenever uh Racket ever gets up from his spot. Oh yeah. It, it's very much military uh, and you've never seen roguish ever be roguish uh, around Racket. Mm. He's always been the first mate. Right. I mean, if you want, I can find stuff out, but 
I don't know. It doesn't seem like something Valentine would do. Yes. Neither to me. It wouldn't seem like she would try to kill another faction leader. But, regardless, she has been amassing a lot of wealth. And with wealth comes power. Eh, debatable. Well, a different source of power. Also debatable. Mm. Well, at least that's how it is with all the royalty. So wait, you, somebody said that this lady's gonna try and take who? Which one? No, not necessarily take his head. Just that she seeks to become a stockholder. And since there's only three stockholders and they can't be removed on the SD fall, it might be nice to keep an ear and eye open. Oh, if you think Racket's got an issue, you don't have to worry about him. Yes. The, the other, other two, two, though. I don't care exactly. about the other two. But if I know, if what I know about Valentine is right, she doesn't have it in her. Mm. I mean, yeah, she's a Harper, but... Yes, and this person did say that the Harpers are not one to do such an act. No, they're not. Harpers are very law-abiding. Harper, Harpers are vanilla. She's vanilla. They're boring. Yes. They're just so boring. Yeah, they're boring. Mm. So, if, if somebody says it's her doing it, it's not her doing it. Let me just put it that way. I don't even need to talk to Rogish. If she's doing it, she's not doing it. You know what I mean, Daisy? Yeah, I get you. I don't. There, there was another thing. And this came from one of the other faction leaders, Ragan. He's currently in town looking for a fellow who escaped from Winspear's prison. Very, really, you know, crazy. Yes, yeah, like... he was emboldened by the fire gob that we had to deal with the other few weeks ago. Yeah, what does Scaly want? Well, he said to keep an ear open, an eye open, for the lost prophet. He can make people go insane and end up commanding them to do his following. And he was last sighted in and around respite. Did this knockoff dragon happen to say what this lost prophet looks like? No, because remember this dragon is blind. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not. I'm still not sure about that one. I think that's just a story that he tells people. Well, in case we do hear anything about it, just something to keep our eyes and ears open on. So no description, just. If somebody says, oh, Lost Prophet was here. Yeah. Apparently. Not much to go off of. Yeah. You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. My only worry is that this Lost Prophet could have some connection with that fire guy. And I don't want to mess with that guy. Oh, yeah. That... Abundantly clear. That fiery bastard, yeah. Um, the uh, uh, cricket's not in stock, right? No, it is not. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I'll try and reach out to Rogish. Okay. Uh. Give me a wisdom check, please. Yeah. You think and eventually Oh Yeah, who is it? Yeah, it's your favorite. Now nothing to oh. worry about, but God, why okay. You know what time it is, right? Yeah, I do. That's why I love p bugging you. Anyway, it's probably nothing, but it's got one of my friends in a... Got her undergarments in a bunch. Anyway, 
Okay. You, you know that Harper lady? The Genasi? You, you need to be a little more specific. The 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 head, the story maker, Valentine oh. Val oh. Valentine. Oh, oh, oh. Valentine, Valentine, yeah, 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 the, yeah, I, I know her, yeah. yeah, what about her? Well, there might be word that she's trying to overthrow and take one of the spots of the um, stockholders of Windspear. What? Yeah, I said. You, you just hear, like, he's just like, you can feel him yeah, sitting up. No, from, what? I know, it's not, I know, they're vanilla, but just something maybe look at. Or keep an open eye open, ear open for, and also old red scale hide, freaking from the Lord's Alliance apparently says there's some lost prophet wandering around, respite, who can make people crazy. No description because of course they wouldn't get any useful information other than a stupid code name, but I figured I'd let you know, bro. Well, let me take a look into that little uh, Harper situation. I can probably get one of the uh, one of the cloaks to take care of it. Yeah, I told her it's if it was her that's gonna do it. It's not her because it's a Harper. It does not sound like her. No, no. Valtine is more of a well. As the name kind of goes by, she's a story maker. She ain't one to uh, influence the stories and, like, rip them up. She likes what she's got right now. I don't think she wants to risk that. So I think there's something going on there. Thank yeah. you for giving me a heads up. Yeah. Figured you In... might want to know. Uh, the lost prophet, lost prophet. Hold it. Wait, wait a second. You, you're talking about the guy that got out with Bob, that what the Hob guy. Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. Y you mean the goblin, the fire goblin that used to be part of the crew, and then you blew him up because yeah. he stole a fucking cannon. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. I, I, I might have heard about something else. Uh, another guy getting out of there. Didn't think it was much. Thought he would have died in the the water somewhere. Yeah, okay. Uh, you again you just feel like the general strain of him like sitting up from whatever he was laying back on, just slowly like coming back mm -hmm. from whatever he dream he was clearly enjoying ever since you disturbed him. Mm -hmm. However, uh you do recognize that he is starting to move over and clearly heading over to his spot. Uh, you hear a slight shuffling of what seems to be pieces of paper for eventually he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lost prophet known as a uh, Brandon Dacian. Uh, used to be a, some sort of a priest you sort. He, um, he ended up trying to get involved with some, uh, individuals known as a Zentarum. Yeah, yeah, we know about them. Yeah, well, they had some sort of uh, initiation that he had to get through. Ended up uh, going into uh, some sort of temple of some unknown lost god and apparently went completely fucking doohickey. So, he started stabbing everybody that was near him, and then when he spoke some words, they kind of just came back up and then started doing shit for him. Then they started doing all the bad shit. Usually, kind of the whole spiel of, like, bringing people back from wherever the fuck they came from is kind of the thing that I started you noticing you doing. So it's yeah. kind of like something that you kind of know. Yeah, anyway, a lot more fun than he used to sound. Right. The thing is, is, yeah, he had a way with words to a point that some people went fucking insane with him. It's maybe some form of language that he got from this elder god he got from. So, my idea is stay the fuck away from him. I don't know, he sounds like a fun guy to get to know, bro. Oh, for fuck's sake, do you really want me to put you on this one, too? I mean... 
You know, maybe sleep on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the details if you're trying to figure it out. All right. You're looking for a human individual, uh, looking at a flesh of white hair, but amazingly, he's looking a bit of an older fella, bald patch in the middle. Uh, he's looking maybe in your mid-70s, 80s. He's a real old fella, but he's still relatively tall. Uh, still got a lot of spunk in him. Apparently, he got some energy from that guy he was talking to, so it might be the reason he's so good at influencing people. Last time I checked, he was able to gather uh, maybe 15 or so individuals within the asylum and created a riot. Uh, the people started attacking each other, started trying to kill each other, and he just kind of sat back and started laughing. So we, we kind of expect him to be fucking doohickey and just expect people to kill each other for his entertainment. Um, last I checked, he was still in the asylum. I thought he died. But the last time someone put a bounty on him, there was a total of around 900 gold pieces in it for you. All right. Yeah, I'll keep that an eye on. was dead. No one wants him alive. <laughs> All right. Where's the fun in that? But I guess if nobody wants him. If you're wanting fun, there was an extra bit about the contract if you want me to get into the fine print. I'm always down for a little fun, Ro. Well, apparently he likes to carry around some sort of conch shell. Uh, apparently it's some sort of connection that he has. Apparently people want to research it and maybe find a way to destroy whatever connection this Elder God has on the material plane so we don't have to deal with it any longer. So get the shell. It All right. Yes, get the shell by any means, but I have a feeling that if he knows he's not going to make it, he might try and destroy it. Yeah, I got ways to stop that. <clears throat> well, good luck to you. And if you do get the conch, there's an extra 300 in it. Right. I'll make sure to make that a priority. A little extra in the fine print. Oh, what now? I'd recommend if any of you understand Undercommon, that it might be a good idea to listen out for that. Because that's the only language he seems to learn these days. Hey, all you taught me was Goblin, okay? Well, all I know is Goblin, so you have to fucking make do. Yeah. All right, I'll see if somebody around yeah. me knows. We'll keep an ear yeah. out. All right, thank you, Olive. I'm going to go back to him. And you just feel the connection fade. Mm -hmm. So we're going to head back to the north is what I take it. On those yeah, that's what ready. everyone's ready. Right with that. Kill those wolves, I guess. I will say, for the time being, if you want to take five to ten minutes for a quick break, now would be the time. All right. I'm going to go with five. See you in five to ten. Mute yourselves if you're not here. Um, uh, I guess I can get another drink too. I got some all the good stuff. We'll be right back.
Right, I'm supposed to keep myself unmuted, but since I'm going to eat, I'm going to leave myself muted. So I made some homemade crab rangoon. And it could be better, but it's pretty good for a first attempt. And by I made it, I mean Fort really made it. I just air fried it. Totally meant to tag Dammy in it. But we got it now. But yeah, made a whole batch. Just brought a handful. So. Not too bad. Kind of looks like it. I could have gotten it a brown, a crispier brown. Uh, one, if I actually fried it, obviously. But two, if I like greased it or something. Or sprayed it with something. before the air fryer. But this has fake crab, cream cheese, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and, or no, Worcestershire sauce. And, um, green onions mixed in. And then wrapped in a wonton wrapper. It's like a vegan wonton wrapper. Only cause that's all they had at the store. But air fry that thing for like at 390 for like eight minutes. I probably could have done longer. Hello, well, welcome back here, buddy. Almost everybody. I'm here. I'm just eating crab rangoon. Me too. All right. It seems like everyone's here. That they're eating as well. All of you start making your way out in the mid-afternoon, heading out of respite. Where are you guys in? Uh, Olive, where is this bounty at again? I don't know. Someplace north near the mountains, I said. The Howling Maw. Somebody said, you guys said that's really far north, I thought. It's pretty up there from where we are. Yeah. Well, I'll say this much as it would be way further than Fort right Radeon. Well, it's about like 10 days of travel. I know that's what I said when we were at Boshan, and the fact well, we came back to respite, which was just going to add more days. Well, yes, it was an emergency to come back. But I don't know if it was an emergency says Daisy said that she could have taken care of it. But... <clears throat> well, anyway, let's just go. Let's not waste any more time. Well, I got good information, so it's not a total lost. And plus we sold stuff. 
Yeah, that's true. Probably would be nice to have those boots in the mountains, but things are expensive. Sonic, which direction are we going? To the north. The north. To the north. Direct north? Towards the Howling Mall. It'd be a bit north and then northwest, right? Slightly northwest. All right. Uh, I'm assuming Harry's coming along. I'd hope so. Yep. Yeah, I would <laughs> hope so. Let me bring up his card sheet, man. All right. <laughs> Let's see how well he does in my hands. Oh, um, wonderful. Hey, Harry, I'm about to break your gun. <laughs> <laughs> More than once. What are you talking about? You're going to give him like 800 points of grit. Yeah, it's true. Nat 20s, right. no, nothing else. Nat 20s and killing foes, yeah. He's going to have grit up the butt. So, we are heading in this direction? No, north and then northwest. <laughs> okay. So, we're heading to the north, to the coast, and then heading northwest. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay. Dune, go ahead and yes. give me a survival roll, please. I'll be helping, Dune. With advantage. Uh, all right, then. That's better. 15. And go ahead and roll me a d20, please. A 12. 14. 14. For that. So 15 on survival and 14 on the die. Okay. As you begin to finish up your first day of travel, uh, you can see moving along the dirt path, making a bit of a wide berth from the a large outcropping of stone that you know to be the home of the large worm. Uh, you can hear the slight rumbling sounds coming from the western side as you walk along. Clearly, the large worm is definitely active. For whatever reason. A little bit faster. You continue onwards, and eventually, just as the sun is beginning to fade, you can see what seems to be a small campsite on the side. A singular small-looking tent uh, resting on the side of the pathway. Uh, this one seems to just be a relatively small campsite. And I'm you can see that to the group. a singular figure looking over uh, at the campsite alone. I can point that out to everybody. What do they want to do? What does the figure look like? Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check, please. You gotta stop asking all these awful things. <laughs> uh, looks humanoid. He's it's the, the whoever it is is sitting down, so you're not entirely sure if they're big, small, mm -hmm. large, but you have a feeling that they are at least humanoid. Well, we can leave him alone and keep going, or you know, talk to him if we can talk to him if you want. I mean, we could. I don't see what's the word on the road. Yeah, it's helpful information. I mean, thing is, though, five people and six people walking up to a stranger in the middle of the road. Oh, off the road, rather. I can yeah. be a bit suspicious. wants to hold my sword, I can go up to him. I'm not wearing any armor or don't have any weapons. Sure. Go for I'll it. hold it for you. Somebody want to come yeah. with me, Professor? Sure. Yeah. Actually, let's do it. All right. Oh, right back, back here. Yeah, it's all right, Harry. 
you just see him like ready his gun, just like ready it and just aim down the sights. Just in case. Just in case. All right, you walk forward. Who's going I forward? I give them eight right before they go. I give them eight at third level. So they get a 10 extra HP. Okay. So who's uh, going forward? Put a guidance onto the professor. It would be myself and the professor. Okay. Yes. You both slowly approach. Uh, now moving closer, you can see what seems to be a jet black set of hair with a singular tuft of white going down the very center. What you can clearly see is a very thick looking cloth that is resting directly underneath it and covering the eyes of the individual who is seems to be shuffling a deck of cards in front of the deck, in front of the uh, campfire. As soon as I notice that, I'm just going to stop the professor and then turn around to face the group with my hand on the professor's chest. All right. There's a chance I know who this is. Who is it? There's a chance I don't. If it is who I think it is, this is going to be an issue. You talking about the dealer? I met him once before too. No. Okay. I'm just. Letting... I don't know for sure, but I'm just letting you know. Okay. Do we want to keep going? I would love. To talk to this guy i really i really would i really would but but if it's who i think it is he's a little crazy and will probably attack us or have me attack you what do you have you attack me I just, if 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 it's who i think it is okay what do you want to do? Find out who it is. <sighs> All right. I'll turn around, kind of shake off, shake, you know, move my head back and forth, crack my neck. Let's do this. And I'll keep walking okay. towards him. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, can I have you? Hi, how are you this evening? I'm doing all right. It's been quiet, peaceful, even. Oh, all here by yourself, an old man like you, alone in the woods <clears throat> or in the desert at night? Old. Yes, old. No, I'm finding my own company more than useful, but I am not opposed to more. I sense there are more of you nearby, apart from you too. Perhaps. I did hear your conversations. Oh, which one? Well, you've certainly had a bit of an issue coming near me, and I don't think my words are gonna make you attack your friend. That's certainly comforting. Uh, Insight check. check. <laughs> sure. I will say this, Professor. You will notice mm -hmm. one thing of note. Okay. He's shuffling a deck of cards, but you'll notice that one of the hands are missing, but still shuffling them. So just like in thin air, basically? Pretty much. You just see okay. with one hand, he shuffles the deck into the hand, and then he seems to throw the deck into what seemed to be another hand, which again shuffles and then sends it over. Okay. Uh, He seems to be relatively calm 
and doesn't seem to be off put by either of your presence. No, we're just wondering. We're traveling further on up north. We wanted to make sure there wasn't any issues between. Uh, I don't know if you came from that way. Maybe you may have seen something. Came from the north, yes. There was quite the commotion when I came over here. The sounds of combat on the fair distance. Then the sounds of more. The sounds of a cart moving by. The sounds of unknown fortunes being told. I'm sorry, what is what does unknown fortune sound like? I don't think I've ever heard of it. I'd be glad to demonstrate. You see him quickly clasp around the deck I and I'll shuffle into a singular Defensive style. foot step back. Just one foot. All right. I can see both of your fates are quite twisted, unchecked, unseen. Perhaps you'd like a little foresight into what could be. Sure. Come, sit at my campfire. Let's see some fortune, shall we? Go over and cautiously take a seat. Yeah, I'll just, uh, um, I'll just watch. For now. You can't help but feel a slight, almost luminescent, translucent form of wings directly behind the man. Hmm. Paler looking skin. Uh... You are familiar with Azimir but you've never really gotten up close to see them personally. Because I am or Park is? Both of you. Okay. Who and or what is Azimir? Human angel. Uh, human okay. angel. Basically a humanoid with uh, angel blood. <clears throat> but you can see him shuffling a deck, which seemed to be a very ancient-looking deck of cards. It's a very skilled shuffling for a man with one hand, I must say. The sacrifices of one's reach can allow the reach of another to reach even further. <laughs> okay, if you could. Now, don't don't take this personally, but if you're going to read my fortune, could you make it slightly less cryptic than what you just said? The thing is with fate, my dear professor, is the fact that at the end of the day, we cannot influence it. It only gives us the straight and narrow, and sometimes a long and winding path that we have to figure out ourselves. Sure. It's just a question of whether or not you're given the shortcuts, and for me, I take none. I admire that. Now, is it you two that wish to see the fortunes? Or are you going to bring your friends along with you? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. I'll I'll kind of stand up and motion for everyone to come over. Not have a good look at him. Sure. Does he have a bald spot? No. And how many Fingers on the one hand? None. So he has one uh, with no hand and one with no fingers? So he has his full hand, and then you can see directly underneath what looks to be a sleeve of a giant coat, just the hanging of the one uh, sleeve. Okay, but his other hand is full. There is nothing. Full digit. The other hand is full, yeah. All right. Once we make it over, I give him the blade. I mean, I give her the blade. <laughs> yes. Hmm. One of Amarellas. 
one of the parks of the West, and one seeking knowledge beyond his control. The one that seeks the group that killed her, and the one that seeks to settle a debt in the guidance of loyalty. I also see a tall eared individual who seeks to create massive destruction and weapons of armaments for his own benefit, it seems. I will also see his fortune through. All right, Wait, you can so... see through that blindfold. And so I can see you quite clearly. Hmm. I can see you quite nicely, Madam Flowers. Can see with a blindfold and a hand to re and no hand to reach. Wait, how do you know their names? <laughs> I know yours on. as well, Fallon. How do you know my name? <laughs> because the fates had decided it. Now, your fortunes are right. As do you have five fingers on your right? Crazy, and maybe I will get you all killed. But there's always a good side of seeing the foresight of the future. I would like everyone to either roll a d10 or choose a number between 1 and 10, please. Three. Put it in the roll 20 chat. Olive chooses to opt out. So if she, if she can do that. She can. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Afraid there's more death in your future, Olive? No, Olive doesn't believe in this fate crap. Because <laughs> if fate does <laughs> exist, then um, whoever controls it is kind of a dick. Mm. Okay, so opting out, I'm going to say that Harry does not not get involved either for the time being. So, any of you familiar with the Curse of Strahd Taroka deck? Yes, <laughs> I am. God damn it, I knew I should have said nothing. Fuck. Very loosely, I am. No, not at all. Well, I have one with me right now, so. Oh, that's cool. Let's see some fortune, <clears throat> shall we? Man, I want to make one of those. You have no idea. That's Just to have on my bookshelf. Three, four. That and a five, deck of many things. Seven. Interesting. For the professor, a card steps forwards, thrown into the sands as it scatters and throws forward into the campfire in front of you. You see what seems to be a card with a olden man with multiple eyes covering the forehead. Okay. All of you see the professor fall back, lying on his back, seemingly unconscious for the time being. Uh, I will apparate my blade. I'm sorry, what did you do to him? He will see. Let's see here. Who's next? Number three, Vadim. Another card is immediately shot out through the flames, resting in front of Vanon. As you see a luminescent card, uh, what seems to be a older man in dark robes holding his hands over two unmangled and walking corpses. That's not mess at all. <laughs> you see the card disappear and you feel a cold sensation run down your back.
all of you can see Bannon's skin grow almost pale white in color after getting his card. Hey, it matches mine. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Four more. One, two, three, four. Daisy. A card is thrown in front of you. A valiant knight standing on top of its steed. A great axe flying through the air as it charges towards a grand, grandiose dragon. You feel strength building in front of you as you feel your heart beginning to build faster in strength. And Dune with a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Instant death. Not that kind of deck. <laughs> or it is. You don't know. Ah, ha, ha. Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Interesting. Um... Yeah, okay. As you see, Dune, a card is thrown in front of you. A looming throne with a masked face, a set of horns adorning the very top of its head as it calls out and sends out a hand of unknown magical aura towards the front of the card. Oh, Jesus. You feel some sort of static beginning to build along your skin. Uh, well, the blindfolded right. man will look over towards you, Olive. There is only one chance for the fates to decide. Are you sure you wish to look away? I already got a crap hand from the fates as when I was a kid. I don't need any more when I'm in a I thought you were a gambler. You see him slowly begin to re-close the deck and begin to rest it to the, his side. Fine. You can't help but see a slight smile on his lips as you accept and with five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you see the card thrown forward through the flames, a valiant knight holding a tower shield and great sword in hand, a beautiful elven woman looking over in your direction. So, I will go ahead and let you guys know what you guys got. Mm -hmm. All right, she's so, kind of hot. <laughs> Olive. You got the Paladin car. Let's see here. Then we have Professor. You got the Sage card. Appropriate. Vannon, you got the Necromancer card. Appropriate. <laughs> Daisy, you got the Warrior card. Interesting. <laughs> Very. Yeah. Oh, you, you think that's interesting. I don't know. Dune, you got the Dark Lord card. Oh, Jesus, that's not good. So, we have the Dark Lord with Dune. We have the Warrior with Daisy. The Necromancer with Vanon. And the Seer with the Professor. Does anyone want to roll a d10 in case Harry ever wanted to accept a fortune? I think. I, mean, as well. I think. Yeah, I'll do it. Roll it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're okay with that, KB. With what you rolling for Harry? I don't know why I wouldn't be. All right, because you just you chimed in, so I didn't know if you wanted to roll it. Oh yeah, no, I said yeah, go for it. Okay. I said we might as well. Like I was just saying, we probably uh, want gotcha. that. Yeah. Five. Okay, five more after that. Let's I, see. I rolled. I swear, five. if this is really, I'm not even gonna look at what this card is yet. Hold on. He got the Oppenheimer oh. card. <laughs> well, 
close enough. He got the Invoker. <laughs> he did get the Oppenheimer card. Okay. He's hey. the fucking destruction. Over here. Okay. I am become death, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> okay. So let me check what these cards give you. Because each one has their own specialty. So, Professor, I'm going to send you a message. Okay. <clears throat> I'm surprised nobody bought healing potions. Again. Yeah, we probably should have. Well, I mean, to be five. fair, <laughs> I have I have a greater healing potion, and I have the right, so I mean, I really need them that badly. How do you have like five? Didn't you pass them out? No, because I crafted two, and I haven't uh, used the uh, other ones I got from the uh, handing in the quest. <sighs> Uh, yeah. Right? Is, is this any time I want, Rob, or is that to be right now? That is any time you want. Okay. Next is Vanon, who got the Necromancer. Hmm. Okay. Vanon. Whenever you bring a creature to zero hit points, you are able to regain the damage that you have dealt on the killing blow as temporary hit points. Mm, I bet. This can be done once per short rest for the next Ooh. week in game. Good thing we're spending 10 days on the road. Next, Daisy, Warrior card. For the next seven days, any melee attacks that you make with weapons are now made with advantage. Oh, damn that's it. That's oh. bad. That would have been great for you. That would have been great. <laughs> I'm going to get some stupid saving throw resistance aura <laughs> or some shit. I mean, those are good too. Yeah, those are great. Dune. The Dark Lord. Oh, all right, let's hear it. So this is an interesting one because you kind of have a choice of how much influence this has. Oh, great. Once a day, you can orphan a spellcaster. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an interesting one. So whenever you make an attack, you can sacrifice a number of your hit points to make it an automatic crit. Okay. Uh, the number of hit points are equal to your hit die. Okay. Now those can't this damage can't be reduced, right? No, it cannot. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Is that for a week as well, or is that that is also up to seven days? Okay. Let's see here, seer, paladin for flowers. For the next seven days, you are able to. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Nice. Uh, <laughs> okay, fuck. Yeah, uh, you are able to essentially divine smite with 1d8 once per short rest, I believe, up to seven days. No, three times per short rest. 
Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Three times but per short uh, rest. One D eight. You are able to do an additional one D eight radiant damage. That's extra damage is pretty good. And if Harry comes around, he might be happy about this. See here. Although technically Van would have also loved this as well. Elian, any elemental damage he does is now doubled. Nice. Oh, a fireball! Oh, yeah. Dude, a oh. fireball! Oh my god! I would have, I would have said, let's go take the freaking fort. <laughs> right. You see him place the cars to the side, looking over you all. You're free to rest here for now. However, it seems that the fates have smiled. It does, yes. Mm. Uh, Professor, you do come back to consciousness. That's good. Uh, and you do get a vision. So I'm going to take you real quick. Yeah, okay. Ba -doop -ba -doop. Oh, I'll be right back. Ba -doop -ba -doop. <clears throat> Daisy the warrior. Interesting. Man, that would have been so good for me. I got the Dark Lord. 100% dude. Dude, the Dark Lord. <laughs> I was horrified when I heard that. I was like, oh no. Dude, it's I was like, Chris, not bad. man, like, I'm like, oh hell yeah, I got the warrior, but damn. And then I heard like the advantage on melees. I'm like, fuck. Yep. <laughs> I guess an auto crit for a D12 isn't that bad. Oh fuck. Well, I mean, there is a oh, chance no. he may consider your spiritual weapon as a melee attack. Oh. So keep that in oh. mind. I like it. I like this idea. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Because it's a melee spell attack. He says melee weapon. So technically, it's a melee weapon, but it may not be considered towards it. So, just a thought. Melee weapon attack. Yes, Let's but see, it's not a the... melee attack. It's a spell attack. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, just worth asking. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm over here just imagining a 60 damage fireball. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I, 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 I would have been like, okay, we have to go take the fort now. There's no <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> just have Van and fireball everyone. <laughs> a catapult, just. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I want to heat up some more crab ragoon and then it'd be gone probably or i'm just fat i can make another drink i'll be back I
speak. Right. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Um. Yeah, as I rise up, I'm going to look at the guy that's dealing the cards and just say, who's the cat? I don't think you want to know who the cat is. I cat? probably don't. Cat? I felt like it would be you, sir. Sorry, you have to repeat that for me. I said, I feel like if anyone would know, it would be you, sir, about this cat. You just see a slight smirk at the edge of his, at the corner of his mouth. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh huh. Okay, I'll play it that way. Well, for now, you are free to rest. But clearly, fate has other things intended for me. Good luck, all of you. Good luck to you. And and you see travels. the campfire rise and build the moment that the flames die down. He is no longer sitting there. What the hell was he? Uh, he was an Asimar. Yeah, I got the feeling he had wings, oh. invisible wings. Oh. I usually don't trust him any more than I trust most tieflings, but... Well... I felt this strong in... months. I think you can be trusted. Anyways... Let's eat. And I conjure food and water. Uh, that was weird. Okay. All right. So, you guys have what seems to be quite the large campfire in front of you. If you wanted to die it down, you're free to do so, so you don't go noticed. I cast uh, the the hut as a minor as a ritual. Oh yeah. Okay. You're on the fire. Remember to charge the uh, waste down. Yeah, I'll dump. I'll charge it. Uh, put some stuff and uh, fill into the waste down. Actually, if we want, I can charge it this time around. I mean, I can always charge it. My spells come back every hour. <laughs> no, because, you know, the sure. reason I say it is this last time we used it was very different from when you charge it, Olive. Yeah. Different types of spells or magic, I guess. Up to you. I'll do a second level cure wounds on it. Okay. It is you see all. the beacon stone begin to flourish with an almost luminescent green light. Well, that's pretty to look at. Yeah, it is. Also, Vannon. Uh. Why were you able to use holy magic yesterday? I'm curious. He says it's holy magic. Well, I can use it and I'm a holy person. So that's why I thought I asked. I don't know anything about holy magic. I'm well, It's just magic. Inside check. Is it magic, though? It's more like divine energy? Do you want to roll? Yep. Just waiting for it to hit. Ah, there it is. It's a nice roll. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what uh, divine magic is. <laughs> that was quick. That was a quick turnaround. Yep. Uh, Daisy gives him a sly smile. 
God caught me. <laughs> Alright, so we're sleeping here tonight and heading off in the morning. Might as well. Yep. We have food for tonight, for the morning, and for on the road. Yeah, I'm not hungry. <clears throat> Oh, it stays good for 24 hours, so you enjoy on the morning. Especially you, and I just start stuffing my face. <laughs> so just kind of curls up in the fetal position. His back turned to everyone. Night. Night. Weird. Daisy will take first watch. <laughs> I'll take I'll take you. second. I'll take the last two. So Daisy and Olive for first. Olive and I'll do second. So Dune and Olive on the second. Then we got Professor and Vannon. And then probably Vannon and Harry. Alrighty. So, first ship comes around. Give me some perception checks, please. Yes. Also nice. Uh, you both start your rest. The moon begins to rise up relatively peaceful you do still hear the faint distant sounds of rumbling coming from the far western side you also see something else in the sky tonight oh. instead of beating wings gliding over the sky you can see it rise over moonlight not red this time but blue <clears throat> oh if they see that no nope. i mean over there oh, oh. anyways it... yeah. was that a dragon yeah yeah it's not red it's blue I can see that. Yes, we've only ever seen red. I mean, we've seen, like, greenish black death. Yeah, but that one was an undead one. And whatever that other one was all the way on the far west, right? Wasn't that a dragon? Yeah, the... Yes, it was a young white one. Yeah, so you've seen white. Yeah. Well, I mean, this direction. Mm. Yeah, that's weird. Well, well that... I'll... I'll let uh, Dune know. Okay. Keep an eye out for it. And once I change watches, I'll let Dune know. Okay. You both watch. Keep a general eye on the direction of where it's flying. Uh, no other change. You shift over to the second shift. Uh, when Daisy told me it was a blue dragon in the air, do I know or what I've heard? Like a blue dragon being in Estrena? You have not heard of a blue dragon before. No. Okay, because I only know the white and the red one. Mm hmm. Mm. You know the white and the red one. Okay. Big red one. Mm, scary one. Okay. Uh, at the second one, I will go ahead and let you both roll again with your perception. Sure. Wow. <laughs> not so better. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I wrapped my hand around the blue Olive? dragon. I'm sorry, what? You adding a d6 to that? You know what? It's going to be my last roll of the night, probably. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'll add a d6. 14. Gotcha. Uh, you will notice around this hour the distant sound of screeching and draconic shouting and billowing as you can see 
almost on the fair distance, what seems to be a gout of lightning shooting through the air and impacting another winged beast amongst the clouds. Oh shit, you see that? I think the blue one found something. Oh, whoa. I can't see what it struck, do I? Uh, you can see the cloud covering. You can just see the shadows of two beasts. Whenever there's another flash of lightning in the air, you can see the luminescence of both shadows. You see the bolt of lightning, and it seems to have struck again. But there doesn't seem to be any direct sight onto the combat between these two winged beasts. You know where oh. I come from? There are these artists that would put in panels a bunch of these like super powerful characters and have these mm -hmm. crazy airborne epic battles with energy and lightning. This reminds me of that. It's very intense. Oh, this is fast. A yeah. blue dragon? I've never heard of a blue dragon. Yeah, same. White one. It's a weird this craft's is, uh, getting uh, more and more uh, common, apparently. Yeah. Around this time, you both hear the <laughs> sound of thunder just hitting the air. Well, at least yeah, they're a ways off. Hopefully they don't come this way. Another flash of lightning can be seen throughout the clouds as you see billowing from them what seems to be a gout of another form of smoke shooting through them. Mm. Another luminescent flash through the clouds as you see whatever this other creature is is in the same size as whatever the blue dragon was as both of them clash and you see what seems to be a another flash of lightning and what seems to be a direct strike as you see what seems to be an almost comical shine to the rib cage of whatever this winged beast was before you see something plummeting down from the sky. Oh, well, well, like the blue one won. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but... Hmm. We should probably stay far away from that when we travel tomorrow. Yeah, I assume it stays there. We'll try and keep an eye on it. I'll make sure to let Harry know. Alright. Next shift. Adwin and Vannon. I'll let know the crazy shit that happened throughout the night so far. Go crazy shit. <laughs> Especially Vannon. Because I know Vannon has a pretty good eye. Yes, dragons. Right. I don't know... Rob, I'm just going to be staring directly at the sky the entire night. I don't know how you want. Uh, if you're focusing entirely on the sky, yes, you will have your own personal perception when it comes to that, but you okay. won't have any uh, form of anything on the ground, per se. Okay. I mean, you know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, Vannon, you're looking more on the more wider range, keeping a close eye on the horizon, making sure that there is no uh, ambushes or anyone that's coming up nearby that would catch you unawares. Meanwhile, Professor, you are very much keeping a very close eye out in the sky looking around trying to see any form of what you had seen before um and you can't help but just look at the moon and swear you can see a slit down the middle for a second before you just turn away and it's just the moon again man i think it's it's watching us all the time what's watching us it's it's honestly you're better not knowing. But I don't I don't think it ever stopped. Uh however, you do keep an eye out on the sky, uh in particular, and you do notice 
maybe a couple minutes into your shift, uh, what seems to be beating wings heading over in this direction. Okay. Uh, what seems to be a l rather large form in comparison to yourselves, but nothing on the magnitude of the red one that you had seen before heading over to the Howling Moor. You okay. can see what seems to be a relatively younger blue dragon. Uh, currently, wings beating, however, clearly weakened from its fight. You can see there is a large chunk uh, right outside near the side of its neck that you can see has been clearly gashed out in the midst. And you can see also that there is a slowly forming almost greenish form of veins going throughout one wing of the creature that seems to relatively weaken when it beats its wings at one point, dropping maybe a solid 15 or so feet before quickly being able to gather itself again. Okay. You can see it slowly gliding as much as it can until you feel it reach the horizon before you can eventually hear what sounds like impact. Well, I think it hit the ground. Hopefully that's two dragons you don't have to worry about now. Apart from that, you keep a very close eye for your intended target. <laughs> nothing more and on that. Nothing more. <laughs> okay. Going to the last shift. Harry and Vannon will both finish up the night. Let's see here. All right, Harry, I need you to put some hacks on right now. There, yep. they, there are. they are. There they are. Dirty twenty, but it's still a twenty. We finished the right, song of the dragons. Uh, both Harry and Vannon get through the rest of the night undisturbed. Uh, Vannon halfway through, Harry will just look in the general direction where you saw the professor looking, uh, where the beach the creature had uh fallen. And you can see him, like, just looking over in that general direction. You can see what seems to be a small gathering of clouds that seem to be rising towards the northern side. He'll just look over at that, look over at you. That doesn't look normal. Question, Vanon. Do dragons influence the weather? I think some of them can. For at least for a small area. So it might not be dead. I won't doubt it. Dragons are fairly durable. Perhaps we should be a little more cautious on the way forwards. Probably. Sun rises. Everyone gets their long rest in. Harry will give you guys the heads up as you will notice that there is a small gathering of clouds in comparison to uh, the large expanse of just pure sunny weather surrounding you. It does seem a little familiar to the ritual-like uh, thunderstorm, except this seems a lot more naturally built. You can see rain, you can see downpour, and there is a gentle sound of thunder coming from the gentle north direction. I look over to those who took the watch at the end. 
Where did that storm come from? Uh, someone said something about dragon or something that fell, something like that. Wait, a yeah. dragon fell? No, it looked like that a blue dragon, the one that uh, was it Olive I... or you said something about? Sorry, I can't remember. Yeah, what blue was dragon was one. Last night. Whatever. It yeah, was. Yes. it, it, it flew won. back past us. It looked like a, a wounded wing, and then dropped way over there and over on the horizon. I heard it fall. So two dragons died. That's what my hope is, but I don't know. Fell. I don't know if it's dead. I see. Well, that is, that is indeed interesting. Very, but I think we should stay far away from it. Very well. It's weekend. We could potentially kill it. Do you want to face a pissed off, angry dragon? No, but I want to face a pissed off, full health dragon a lot less. Well, blue dragons aren't the area. friendliest. No, they're not. They're just as mean as red dragons, aren't they? Oh, yeah. they're they're both evil because they're chromatics. Yeah, you know, but I think uh... the red ones are more of a forgive the joke, fiery nature. You, all of you can either roll me a nature or arcana check, or history if you're proficient in that. Oh, oh I rolled mm -hmm. history then. Hey, damn! <laughs> so Opposite 20, sides. To twenty-three, Rob. Okay. Twenty-three. Oh, nice. Let's see here. Uh, after a collective bit of information gathering. Um, Vannon eventually comes out with clearly a little bit of research into dragons himself, wanting to mostly influence the elemental sides of Cannon Rock within his research. You come to realize that red dragons are very <laughs> egotistical, very strong-natured, and very confident, mainly because of the fact they are extremely destructive beasts. Meanwhile, blue dragons do have a sense of honor to them, but only if they get the upper hand in the deal. It's not very they honorable. Are, they seem to at least give people a waking chance instead of immediately breathing death on them. In comparison okay. to most other chromatics, they're, they're just... still evil, yes, but they at okay. least let people try and get their way out of it. Okay, yeah, probably best avoided. But I mean, if we run into it, it's probably better to deal with it now than later. Uh, no, I have to say, but I agree with you. I would say I will that... say with a little bit of the information that you do know is that blue dragons are known to be burrowing creatures. Okay, so, yeah, never mind. It's probably underground. So I'd say it probably can't fly right now, but if it's burrowed, I can't do anything about it. Well, let's just uh, keep an eye open. If we have to, we'll take care of it. Sure. Right. Onward we go on the road Onward again. Road. Yeah, yeah. So, Dune. Yes. Make that survival check, please. I will Alrighty. help him. Okay, with a advantage. Yes. So moving on. Almost on that twenty. Getting right over to here. And roll me a d twenty, please. As you guys make your way over, almost reaching perhaps mid-afternoon, as you scour through the desert plains, uh, you can see in front of you, as you rise over a particular set of raised stone, 
uh, a very clear, thick looking thunderstorm ahead of you. All of you can see what seems to be a relatively large expanse of clouds that are currently surrounding your way forwards. The darkness is slowly beginning to gather and completely block off any sunlight above it. There is a thick cloud of rain that is moving down and pelting the nearby uh, sand and stone, which is making the ground look a little harder to traverse. I'll kind of take my scarf and cover the bottom half of my face. Um, how are we going to get around this if we want to get around? Well, you're the expert in these lands. Whatever you say. Hmm. From the size of the storm, is there a safe way to go around it and I have to difficult terrain we're about to go through our zone? Does that answer your question? Hmm. Yes. Uh, okay, so seeing when the storm is, we can either stay on the go back towards Boshion and miss the storm that way, or we that way, and I point left. Well, we could also move left, as you said, and see if the storm will move or not. After all, it is a storm. It has to pass. It's over it is dragon? natural compared to the, uh, the red massive one. Uh, Professor, give me a perception check, please. Okay. Not great. Ten, halfway there. Ever. You look into the distance trying to gather if there's any signs of the large winged beast that you've seen before. Uh, in the main, it's hard to see through the thick uh, clouds and the thick uh, rain pour at this moment in time. But you can see what seems to be the very cusps of what looks to be an oasis of sorts. Hey, there's an oasis there, though. You really? Check that out. Oh, I didn't say that before, but it's in the storm. Is you, it not? You can, bar you can barely see the very edge of it. It seems like there is a small gathering of nearby trees, uh, a small mostly at this point that you can now see is slowly expanding water uh, from the constant downpour that is slowly beginning to spread throughout the land and the nearby uh, sand and stone. Uh, you've seen flash floods before. This is certainly one of them. And you can clearly see that there was something here before but you do notice that one of the trees has been completely demolished in half. Where we're standing, or at the oasis? Where you're standing uh, for now. You can see okay. that in the oasis, there is one of the trees that you can see is completely broken in half in comparison to the others. Okay. Uh, hmm. Does this look like are like are we currently standing in like low ground? Does this look like it could be like a dry, relatively bed? high ground where okay. you are right now? You're okay. near the coast. You remember that you, around this area is mostly cliff faces and downward drops uh, into the coastal line. Okay, uh, but it's more of a raised ground in comparison to the more center terrain. Okay, I mean like. Maybe we try to work closer to that oasis, but let's stay on high ground. There could be some flooding coming. <clears throat> Do I have an idea which direction the storm is moving? Oh, I don't know. Looks pretty Only safe. Only a nature check, please. Damn. All right. As the professor <laughs> says, it is unmoving. It is staying exactly where it is. But why? Hmm. Interesting. It's probably got something to do with that dragon, honestly. A dragon producing a storm? Don't know. 
It's kind of in the direction that dragon dropped. I look at I look at Van and Van and have you heard anything about that? No. I will say with a nat twenty. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Since we're yeah. since we're riding on that so much. Uh we will go ahead and say that in many cases when a creature such as a dragon uh, stays within a location, it does have an influence on the surrounding environment. Usually, this does take a number of days to really gain influence, uh, but that's mostly like embedded into the land. Usually, when it comes to blue dragons, or their, uh, in comparison, which I believe is a bronze... Uh, that in many copper. cases, no, yeah, it's right, either um, copper, it's either copper or bronze. I think copper stays in the water and bronze is desert. Yeah, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. But uh, you believe that most lightning based elemental dragons do have an influence to carry thunderstorms around them when they are staying in one location in comparison to others. Granted, this is a much smaller thunderstorm than what you would expect from a dragon. But due to its younger nature, you feel like this is the most it can conjure elementally. Hmm. Oh, what's your comparison? Time, well, I will say in comparison to what you see in to the Howling Maw, you will notice that there are a thick amount of clouds that do surround the Howling Maw, especially around its peak, and the closer you are to the mountain, the thicker and darker the clouds seem to be. What direction and, is that oasis in? Oh, sorry. No. Uh, oh, no. The oasis seems to be right around here. Ooh. Um, and in comparison, you know that the clouds of the Howling Moor do spread around about to here-ish. Okay. Uh, are we sure we want to go in this oasis? It might be a bit dangerous right now. Yeah, um, I'd like to check it out, but... It uh, the, as you were saying, didn't that rain cloud come in last night and then come this way? Well, it hasn't moved, but it's formed since last night. More than <laughs> there was a storm that came in last night. Was there a storm? I don't think there was a storm last night. No, I said the the storm, the one, and I point to the one that we're looking at. Did it come in last night? But uh, it you seems did hear, maybe not on you my did watch. Hear the impact. Uh, Harry yeah. will perk up and say, "Oh yeah, there was some uh, rolling of thunder and of the like last night around the last shift." Hmm. I would venture to say this uh, dragon is uh, not dead. Nope. <clears throat> but probably recovering. Be, but he's probably not in a good mood. Yes. So, if you want to go to this oasis, I suggest we are careful. Otherwise, we should circumvent as much as possible. If we don't want to fight a, a dragon. Um, You know, perhaps we should avoid this one for right now, being that it's close to that dragon. Um, unless anyone else wants to go. I mean, I could just get the next one. <laughs> Check this out on the way back. <laughs> well, you can remember something of it, then we can find it. Well, I'm yeah. always down for a fight, but the dragon, I'm not sure. Vanning, can you mark, mark it on the map? I was kind of point over in the direction of it. Is that doable? Mark on your map. What do you think, Alice? You want to fight a dragon or keep going? 
Hey, I just said we can come up here to fight some wolves. <clears throat> can I draw on this map? Oh, I can. Well, I know you like fighting as much as I do. I only like killing things that have a reason to die. Hmm. To my knowledge, this dragon hasn't done anything and isn't going to do anything against us or the town. Plus, I don't know anything about dragons, so. Then yes, let's circumvent. Right. If you want to circumvent this the fastest, stay the coast and go back towards Boshia. Circumvent always faster. Very well. All right. Yeah, sure. In this case, I need another survival check, please. I will help if possible. Yeah. To reach into the night. I needed that too. <laughs> All right. Give me another d20, please. Yes, sir. Another three. <laughs> Maybe somebody else should start Another. rolling your d20s. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I can't roll them right. If anyone wants to take over my <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. You guys make it to the very edge, to a very familiar rise of dunes, uh, to the very borders of Boshian. You can still see the remaining embers of whatever campsite you had made. Over the last uh, couple of last day or so, it seems, and you do eventually find the rise, only to take a look down inside the crater of Boshion. Uh You can see quite clearly that there is movement, and quite a vast number of it. Hmm. I'll put this out to everybody. What Looks like Boch comes to refill back again. What now? Yeah, I agree. I will take a gander, see how many people are right now inside Boshion. Uh, you can just see a multitude of bodies. Maybe 40, 50 or so. Boshinians? Or, not, or can we not tell? Uh, from this distance... You'd have to try and really look. I'll squint, see what I can see. Yeah, sure, why not? I can see, you know, you know, the there. Block, block the sun from my eyes with my hand, like a little visor. Uh, it's relatively nighttime right now, so you do have a bit of cover of night. Let's try, let's try and count. Yep. Okay, you, if you are proficient in per, in uh, perception, you are free to do so. Hooray! If you are not, you're free to help anyone who does. Sure, I'll help. I'm going to try to get a better picture, get better, I'll get a better view. Helping Dune, so Dune, you can re-roll in yeah, case I'll... you want to try and get higher than 21. I guess I'll give Professor one. 22! Okay. 22! Uh, professor, you may re-roll. Nope, we'll stick with that 21. Okay. Any more rolls? Gonna stick with those. Rolls at all. Okay, so uh, both with the collective uh, efforts of the group, you can all get a genuine idea that as both you and uh, Professor and Dune start looking inside, getting a proper look into it, uh, you can see that these are not Boshians. These are the bandits. And there's yeah. a lot of them. Uh, you can see bandits. maybe a good squadron of maybe two squadrons of 20 or so of these bandits. A lot more armed and a lot more prepared, it seems, as some of them are creating forms of barricades. Uh, along the borders of what used to be Boshion. Uh, you can also see Around. the inside uh, remains of the building have been completely destroyed. 
mm -hmm. completely raising it to the ground. Uh, there is nothing left of the remains of Oceon, just a flat bit of land, except from the barricade slowly surrounding it. You can gone. also see uh, the tree is still there. Okay. Uh, you can see that there is someone currently hanging amongst one of the branches. Uh, looks to be another bandit of sorts who probably tried to do the same as Daisy. However, it's a clear indication that no one should touch the tree. But yeah. you can see uh, what seems to be one very large individual uh, stepping from the very center, maybe standing 20 or so foot tall. This yeah. looks to be some form of a giant. Yeah, Looking around have... with a club, uh, you all get a whoosh of wind overhead as you do see two winged individuals, bat-like in nature, and you do see two individuals riding along the backs of them. And they seem Definitely to circle over and also land within inside the camp. Oh, scratch, uh, Bochian being clear. I mean, it was inevitable. One guy did what? manage to escape. Yeah. Damn it. A rat bastard ran away. Let's hope that they don't come any closer this direction. And that we can use the shadow of the storm for cover. Agreed. But stay low. Uh, no lights. Valen, are you wishing to send Ozzy in? Yes. Okay. All of you watch as Vannon sends the luminescent ghostly owl into the air. And it shoots <laughs> forwards down into the camp. I need Ozzy to make a stealth check, please. Doom gets visibly tense. Thirteen. Okay. I will say that he will have advantage given the night sky right now. And fourteen. But still. <laughs> yes, fourteen. But still. I, I would like to ask this. Would you like to use one of your portents? Yes, I'll use the fifteen. <laughs> okay. So that's a plus three. So 80 18. Total. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you watch as Ozzy disappears down into the crater. All of you see the owl disappear and fade into the distance. Vannon, you look through the eyes? Yes. Okay. Ozzy will circle around... Uh, you can see the two individuals stepping off the bat-like creatures. Uh, very much reptilian, even draconic in nature. However, the wings are integrated into the front claws themselves, creating a web-like membrane along the very backs and along the inner arms. Uh, you have come across these creatures before in your research. However, you can't exactly remember the name. Uh, you do see these winged creatures do have a very nasty-looking, almost scorpion-like tail that seems to swing behind them. Uh, however, raised up to make sure that it doesn't interfere with their rider. You can see two individuals stepping from the winged beast. One familiar to you, the other not so much. Uh, you can see the blonde-haired elf that you had seen in the vision of the arch priestess when looking into uh, Fort Ridian before. Uh, this blonde-haired elven individual seems to be stepping forwards into uh, the main tent area that you can see which was guarded by the giant at the front. You see this 
blonde haired elf lean into the tent as you see the other individual uh a grayish skin uh covered in multiple tattoos and what looks to be a set of jagged looking arm blades covering the very forearms of this giant goliath as if the very blades were etched and placed within the very bones of his arms. I mean, that's pretty <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> uh, you can see him also wielding what seems to be a large glaive on his back, uh, which does look very dark and almost crimson like to the very tip of the blade. You see, for a moment, the Goliath looks up in your direction towards Ozzy. Before you see him looking more closely towards the moon. Apparently not seeing your familiar for the time being. You see the giant look up in the general direction of Ozzy, again, just simply looking out towards the moon, as you can see maybe 35 to 40 individuals moving amongst this camp right now. Uh, you can see all most them, of the elder winged ones? Uh, most of them look like bandits. Uh, however, some of them you do recognize those heavier-looking longbows of the sharpshooters. That you'd seen before. Uh, you also do recognize what seems to be some sort of caster who is creating small ritualistic uh, shields around some of these barricades to try and reinforce them. I'm going to be back are... after that. Clearly not the same individuals that you met the first time within Boshion. These guys yeah. seem more well prepared, well more armed, and clearly here to hold ground in comparison to just a simple supply run. Uh, you will notice, however, with the last of your vision that the familiar teleportation circle that you had seen before uh, does seem to be active right now. So they're transferring stuff out of Boshion or to, into Boshion? It seems both in and out. Uh, if you waited a little longer, you would notice that you would see maybe four or five individuals either appear or disappear within the teleportation circle over uh, the next hour or so. I relay most of that back to the, the, the team. All right. Ozzy returns. You guys get your information. It's just fucking wonderful. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to take all that out. No. <sighs> Let's just no. No way. go past here as quickly and quietly as possible. I mean, that's the idea. All right. Like you said, this. let's use the pod cover. Mm-hmm. All right. So... Are you guys resting here on the edge, or where are you guys going? A bit further away from Boshion, using the cloud cover as uh, to shadow the hut. Okay. So you guys are entering the thunderstorm to get the cloud cover, and then putting up the hut. Yes. Okay. High ground. For you guys to Put make that distance... Ground. I need everyone to make me some constitution saving throws, please. Damn it. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, as you guys make your way into it, oh, you rolled Constitution. Do you have an extra to your uh, save? No, I don't. I, ooh, actually, okay. no, it's both are plus one. Okay. I'm a 13 con, so no, I, I'm not proficient in it. All right. So, uh, Vannon, Olive, Dune, and Harry all get pummeled by the water and downpour before you're able to bring up uh, the hut. Uh, all of you get an intense feeling of cold, and you <laughs> all get a form of exhaustion. So... I believe Dune has the clasp. Yes, I do. I have the ring. Does that ignore extreme cold temperatures? Yes, that's at least what I said. <sighs> okay. So both extreme Harry cold and weather fix. are exhausted, but with some luck, if you guys don't get disturbed tonight, that won't matter. Exactly. Make sure you set this hut up kind of on high ground. High as we can make oh. it. That'll be insane. Who's are we doing the same shift tonight? So Yeah, I can do the same shift. Yeah. Daisy yeah. and Olive, Olive and Dune, mm -hmm. Adwin and Vannon, and Vannon and Harry. Mm -hmm. I will make uh the uh create food and water again once the hut is set so that okay. the make food sure and water does not spoil. I shall stuff my face as usual. Okay. So I need some perception checks. Please. Let's start with Daisy and Olive. Uh first shift. You know, let's add a D6. I haven't used it. Okay. Hey. There, there we go. That's what I was hoping for. Uh, yeah, actually, that's perfect. As Daisy, you're having a little bit of a rough time getting through the rough outer shell of this. Uh, not only the hut, but the pouring rain that does seem to be constantly. Uh, scattering across the very top of this dome seems a little almost irritating to the point that it does uh, kind of put you off guard for a moment. However, Olive, you do uh, start to see through the thick uh, you do start to see through the thick fog and downpour and you can see that there is movement in the distance. Uh, a large creature, a slight spreading of wings, maybe a mile away. Damn, I can see a mile at night through a storm. You just see the flashes of lightning in there, just see, you do see like a form shadowed on the horizon. Hey, Daisy, that uh, dragon might be over there. No, uh, it's closer than expected. I think it's grounded. Well, that... That's, uh... Yeah, let's hope it doesn't decide to fly. Yeah, I'll try and keep an eye on it. All right. The occasional flash of lightning throughout the thunderstorm. You keep a close eye on where you saw it before. Uh, every now and then you just see the occasional wing rising from somewhere on the horizon, but you're not entirely sure mm -hmm. the exact location to it right now. Moving over to the second shift. Daisy goes to sleep. Dune wakes up. Another perception, if you do not mind, Olive. Yeah, I'll add D6. All right. Yeah. 
you look over in the same direction, giving Dune the general idea as to where you're looking. However, you've completely lost it where exactly the dragon was. I swear it was the over there port. like an hour ago. No, I believe you. It's not good that we lost sight of it, though. Yeah, I'm sure it'll turn up. Hopefully not near us. All of it moved. Do you think the cloud cover moved too? We're supposed to follow it, right? Why do people people keep asking me about dragons? I don't know jack crap about dragons. I don't either. Sure, sure, it'll move with them. Why not? Dark, oh, dark, thank you. That's all I needed here. Yeah. The constant downpour, the sh sound echoing against the dome above you. Nothing seems to change when you end your shift. Professor and Bannon. Perception checks, please. Uh, Professor, again, the downpour seemed a little too thick. Trip really grasped right. through. You get the lightning flashes every now and then. Uh, however, it's really hard to get a bearings onto where exactly this creature is when it seems to be in its own natural habitat. Okay. Vanon, you can't help but feel a general presence slowly beginning to build near you. Okay, good. No, it's not. <laughs> Almost like the hairs on the back of your neck beginning to rise. Almost like static electricity. <laughs> The silence is killing me. I was about to say, did I get disconnected? Yeah. <laughs> what, did I miss something? This is getting intense. You guys hear heavy sound of footsteps slowly beginning to approach. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't hear that. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, from the direction of the. From Boshan. Yeah. Oh. We fucked up. Are those sleeping woken up? That's what I'm saying. Is there, are we? Am I hearing it from the direction of Boshian? It is not coming from the direction of Boshian, no. Where is it coming from? It is coming maybe possibly a hundred feet within the mask and downpour. You're not entirely sure where. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to go around and slowly start Shaking everything. Right. Here we go. God damn it. Everyone get up. Get up. I thought yeah, you just... couldn't spell us. Shh, yeah. shh, shh, shh. I just kind of put my finger to my lips and then point over in the direction of the noise. I know. I As really you guys watch slowly stepping out from the downpour a flash of lightning appears overhead as you do see two gnarled cord back blue horns displaying a jagged looking blue maw a set of porcelain blue white eyes looming over in your direction <sighs> Claw reaches out over one of the nearby trees, crushing it underneath it, looming over, sniffing the air, and only seems to lower down against the ground as if feeling something. 
I need all of you to roll stealth checks, please. I don't think mm, there's no call for that. Uh, that was almost two nat twenty in a row. Doesn't your class protect you against the cold? Soon. Yeah. yeah. Harry, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, like, but I have I have exhaustion. <laughs> But from well, what? what? It protects you against the cold. <laughs> yeah. That's what Rob told me. I have a point yeah, of exhaustion. I'm going for an extra hour after we're supposed to sleep. Well, no, but he said track, right? that he had the clasp, so you'd be fine, right? Then everybody with oh, the ring he? who failed yeah. would have had the exhaustion, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which they don't. Nope. So, Dune, you're fine. You don't oh! Have it. Yeah, I don't know why you've been... However, it's still an eight. <laughs> uh, my oh, bad. Oh, oh. I didn't. I didn't know. I thought I was exhausted. Good. Good. I just rolled. My bad. I didn't know that. So... Harry okay. and Daisy, so... what is going on over there? I will doing? use my Joker to reroll. Okay. <laughs> oh, Are you sorry. making it a twenty? Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. The twenty plus I'm the twenty-three. I'm probably looking at like fifteen average with these rolls. Well, no, I'll have it four. 26 plus 8. Plus no, I'll have, I'll have oh, no, 14. 14. Yeah, 14. Yeah. Wait, um, yeah. I'm confused. So do I have exhaustion or no? No. No. You do oh, Okay. Okay. Remove it. That you know what? Gonna fuck us. That's sick. You know what? Gonna fuck us. That's, you know what? I'm not going to use his Joker. I can't use his Joker when he's not here. That's true. So in ninety-seven. I mean, if it means a dragon's gonna spot us, which can't is use his Joker, he's not here. Yeah, no, I just say, yeah, that's not as close. Fifteen. Dragon's passive bowel movement is a sixteen. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. The fact that we're inside Liaman's tiny hut help at all. You know what? Yes. It nice. technically would. Nice. So I will Dude, turn okay. that 14 into a 22. Yay. Daisy, go ahead and roll another stealth check. <laughs> Dune, go ahead. I'll I'll say that's a 10 instead of an 8. Okay. No, that's I'll better. Harry, re-roll. I mean, technically I can't get more than a 20, and I used the Joker, so... Oh, yeah, use a Joker. Mm. Oh, that's Harry, there we Harry. go. That's a spirit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I... if you wanted, you could re-roll it and keep the Joker. Well, it's re-roll, a... and I will... You can choose whether or not you still wish to use it. I choose to use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please, please yeah. add this back to my, oh, so... my 20, thank you. Good call. So we all yep. essentially roll another so... advantage. Uh, yes. I might as well. I'll try it. I'll just see if I can get better. Sure. I doubt I will. That's a pretty strong roll. I mean, then Vannon should roll at advantage. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep the 26. Yeah. Extra 10 would help. Sure, Vannon, like. go ahead. You want to try and nat 20 that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, you, if you're given the chance to nat 20, always go for it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we keep the 23. Sure. We have 22, 26. We have the 10. Yeah. <laughs> and we have our lovely 20 to add to that instead of a, instead of a Sorry, six. guys. <laughs> so, so we've got so a really 121, high. which we is, got, I believe, a 20. Really, yeah, a 20 we're going to be close average. to 20. We're going to be really close that's to 20. 20. It's over average. 20, actually. It is a 20. Barely over, yeah. Just barely over 20. As the passive perception of a young blue dragon is 19. Yeah, I was about to say, he's oh, going to have to actually work hard for a 20. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dragon's poop 16 oh. for 20. That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see him again seem to loom over as all of you hold your breath, not wishing to move for just even a second. The creature will loom in getting to the very edge of the hut. And we'll slowly begin to back away. 
Benny See hears him. the noise from the Boshan camp and heads straight there. Yeah, <laughs> we all watch an epic battle unfold as the night progresses. As the dragon says, you "I could always use a fourth meal." <laughs> Disappointing. Could have used some help. Use some help? He said help. Help. Oh. You see him slowly begin to fade away in the downpour. The footsteps fading off into the night. Downpour continues. The hut has seemed to have saved you. And that is where we will end the session for the night. See, I'm getting though. mixed signals. He thinks our smell repulses him, but he wants our help. No, yeah, the sound you're making is repulsing him. Mm. He could have used some help. Maybe we should consider. I mean, we could have insight. See if it's true. And yeah, we could have insighted. He's already gone lying. now. I, I thought he was lying. Exactly. But I don't believe a dragon. I don't either. But... No, we didn't. Well, you got yourselves into the thunderstorm. Now with a blue dragon that has caught some form of recognition that you're here. You guys uh, can plan what you wish to do next week and probably give uh, Harry a friendly heads up as to what he has to deal with now. Yeah. Don't tell him anything, and we just tell him we need to go west, and he's on point. No, like, go north. <laughs> like just go north out like of this. 100, 150 yards. We'll be right behind you. <laughs> hey, Harry, I saw this really cool blunderbuss looking thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, like a, it, it looks really, really fucking cool. You should just go over there and pick it up. <laughs> it's like, like big and image. blue. <laughs> it has lightning damage. <laughs> no, it's, it's, like, it's so it, cool. It does, it does <laughs> hey, Arthur, she came there and dropped this really sick gun for you. Yeah, you should go grab it. <laughs> Why does it have teeth? Don't need to worry about it, buddy. Don't, don't even think yeah. about it. <laughs> it makes a lot more sense if you don't think about it, I promise. <laughs> uh, wow. I will say this. You do, you would recognize, uh, Vanon, that the creature that the blue dragon had killed was a green. Green dragon? A young green dragon, yes. What's a green dragon doing out here? That made no A lot of dragons sense. out here. All right. Yeah, but green dragons tend to take to Thanks. the forest, not the desert. Well, what about all that the shit forest, that's The forest, not the yeah. desert. He did fly yeah. south for it. And had his, remember, it, it came up from here, we are from the bottom near the faction here. camp, and then uh, we should be flew back all the way up tomorrow. where we are now. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, fuck. Why did I forget about yeah, that? God damn it. And then also, you know, it had like that green glow on his swing. Um... Yep. Oh, yeah. Wounded a little bit. A greenish cloud shooting from the thunderstorm.